After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition. So they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, the hustlers give charity a bad name. Did you notice the uh, speed signs here? Alex and Paul become a driver's worst nightmare. Can I just step out of the car, please? Oh, and Amelia Fox takes on her most difficult role yet. It's horrible. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is a charity fundraising event. Over 200 people have gathered in the name of a local charity, eager to donate money and enjoy themselves in the process. But when people are out to have a good time and give their money away, unfortunately for them, a hustler is never too far away. This is the charity banquet scam. A classic way to raise money at an event like this is a raffle. And tonight is no different. The three lucky winners step up to collect their prizes, and everyone seems happy. But let's take a closer look at those prize winners. Third prize, an MP3 player and a bottle of champagne went to this guy. Nothing fishy there. But if the second prize winner looked familiar, that's because, under that disguise, was Paul. And the first prize? That went to another familiar face. Alex. The boys are on a winning streak tonight, but that shouldn't come as a big surprise, because the person reading out the winning numbers was Jess. Thank you! Enjoy your prize! Once the raffle's over, the hustlers hot-foot it to the back exit. But did they really come here tonight just to claim a couple of raffle prizes? Of course not. They're leaving the building with over a thousand pounds in cash. To find out how they got it, we need to go back to the start of the evening. Jess had advertised herself as a charity events coordinator and had been hired by the event organizers to carry out the raffle. The perfect front for an undercover operation. Uh, my name is Susie Wendell and uh, work for charitable organizations nationwide. The third prize... First, Jess whets the crowd's appetite by revealing the fantastic prizes. The tickets are £10 each, there's 20 tickets in each booklet. The raffle tickets were £10 a pop, and to make it easy for people to buy them, Jess went from table to table. Hi guys, would you like to buy any raffle tickets this evening? Three tickets. Three tickets. The chance to win a fantastic raffle prize and give to a good cause at the same time was too good for most guests to turn down. Thank you very much, thank you. So it wasn't long before every table had bought tickets. Jess collected over a grand and left the guests to carry on enjoying themselves. But what about her helpers? The furry pig and the cuddly panda weren't quite as innocent as they seemed. In fact, they were Alex the pig and Paul the panda, and they were here to help Jess fleece the crowd. Not only did the costumes hide their identities, but they also butted up the partygoers enough to willingly hand over their cash. But the hustlers weren't home and dry. Of course, the amazing prizes that had tempted the guests into forking out so much money were fake. So to get away with the money, the hustlers had to win the prizes themselves. But someone in the room full of people was bound to recognize them. So while Jess counted the cash, Alex and Paul got ready for the final stage of the scam. Posing as guests, Alex and Paul infiltrated the room just before Jess came back in to carry out the raffle draw. Then when it came to the star prizes, Jess simply called out the numbers of two tickets she'd palmed earlier, which corresponded to the ones held by Alex and Paul, making them the lucky winners. So, 
Not only was all their money in the hands of the hustlers, but the Marks had coughed up for prizes that never existed in the first place. We asked the guy who collected third prize to show us what he'd won. Uh. An empty box for an MP3 player. And... Yeah, a bottle of water. I was believed to have won a bottle of champagne, but it's a bottle of water. So how did some of the other guests react when we told them they'd been conned? When I heard that it was £10 a ticket, I was just like, £10 a yeah, ticket? Yeah, I know? thought it was a lot, but that's why we went Because off. it was part of a charity, I was just like, oh, you know, it's £5 each. Well, I hope people who are actually organising might be feeling sick about it. Are you with me? When a bogus charity works like this, they're stealing from the people giving them money, but they're also stealing from the people who should in fact benefit. Obviously the psychology is simple, everybody does want to help a charity to some degree and by putting up a front like this they can collect thousands, even hundreds of thousands of pounds over a short period of time. When outsourcing work to companies you should always make sure that you check their credentials first and if you are raising money for a charity then it's always best to go through the official sources or you could just do it yourself. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some, so who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, they give you the inside track and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. As soon as you see them walk away, you like I felt so awful afterwards. <sighs> Oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is actress Amelia Fox, star of Silent Witness, The Pianist and Dorian Gray. I don't like doing anything which upsets other people and I, I'm scared that this is going to upset someone more than anything. I know that feeling when you think that you've lost something in your bag or you've lost your wallet or your keys or you think someone's nicked them and you just feel that horrible physical sickness and I, I'm a bit worried about making someone feel like that. It's time for Amelia to meet the hustlers and find out what kind of scam they've lined up for her. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be walking down the street, mm. you're going to be bumping into somebody, you're then going to be dropping a package that we're going to be providing for you. You're then going to claim that whatever was in it was a very valuable, you can make up a story and then you're going to get that person pay you for it. But what they don't know is that it's actually just broken glass. So Amelia is about to attempt the melon drop, a classic street hustle. Carrying a box, the hustler bumps into a mark on purpose, then blames them for smashing the expensive vase contained in it. They then con the mark into paying for the damage. But I don't have to blame them. You, do, you oh, yeah. were aggressive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's their, their fault. It's their you fault. Have nothing to do. They walked into you. It's not your fault. It's their fault. Amelia's worst fears have come true. She'll certainly have to upset someone. What we're doing is we're engineering a situation that they're not expecting. And then you're manipulating them psychologically into feeling what responsible. What if they just walk off? Well, stop them. Stop them. You're going to have to stop them. It, it is, it's just like an acting part. You're going to get into character. It. So Amelia doesn't fancy her new role as a hustler. Oh, oh I feel sick. Enjoy it. But she can't delay it any longer. She heads off with Alex and Paul to a carefully chosen location for the hit. It's a busy street, full of expensive boutiques and restaurants. Just the kind of place you might bump into a passerby with plenty of cash to spare. Talking on her phone as a decoy, Amelia takes up position outside one of the shops. I'm going to go and sit up there. Great. Alex is going to act as her accomplice and select a suitable looking mark. He positions himself at a table outside a nearby cafe. Paul does likewise. He'll be close enough to intervene if anything goes badly wrong. But otherwise, Amelia's on her own. This scam may sound simple, but it takes split-second timing and nerves of steel to pull off successfully. And although Amelia knows the script, this scenario is for real, so she must be ready to improvise. With the three of them in position, the only element missing now is a mark. 
Once Alex spots someone, Amelia will find out if she's got what it takes. Cue Amelia. Oh yeah, I will. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it when I get back to the office. I promise I will. No, I will. I said that I will. Oh, for sake, that's absolutely ridiculous. Oh my god, I'm gonna call you back. Oh, oh my god. Hell. Clearly upset, Amelia's already got the guy on the back foot. What was it? It was a vase that I just got from Harvey Nichols just now. I just got this from my boss for his wife's anniversary tonight. I didn't mean to, you know what I mean? I don't go around. No, no, stuff. it's like it's like it's partly my fault. I should have been <clears throat> more careful. I just don't know what to do. I feel such a gear, I feel really bad. Sorry, it's put you in your real position. She's got him hooked into believing the story. But it's not sympathy she's after, it's money. I haven't got any cash on me to get him. I'm gonna get fired for this. How much did it cost? 60 quid. 60 quid. I feel sick. Now she's established the amount, Amelia needs to go in for the kill. What am I gonna do? Can you lend me the money and I'll get it back to you? No. I'll write down your no, address and everything. You got any money on you and I'll get it back to you. She's devised a convincing way to get the mark to cough up. What's your name? My name's Tony. Tony. She takes his name and number and promises to pay him back. Lucky, I'll call you, I'll call you, I'll call you. Quid, right? Yeah. Thank you. I'm really, really grateful and I get it back to you. Okay, Thanks so much. Uh, get the same one and yeah, we'll get it back. I'll get it right back to you. Right. Thank you. Right. 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 Thanks, Tony. She's done it. The Mark walks away 60 pounds worse off, but feeling he's done a good deed. But what of our hustler? It's horrible. I felt I was really in, after when he gave that 60 pounds, I was really in shock. He gave all of it and was expecting me to call and give it back. Which is how it happened really, really fast. I mean, I saw the box, I felt really bad, and then before I knew it, I knew, you know, to do the right thing and be a good guy, I had to buy her a new vase. So, literally, without thinking, I'm handing over the money within 30 seconds, 50 seconds, something like that. I feel really guilty. I do. It makes me want to cry. I feel really, really... I can't believe that people come people and don't go home feeling awful. Still to come, Alex and Paul drive these motorists to despair. Do you see the sign? Because I can see it from here. And it's panic stations at Waterloo. You had like a yellow work jacket thing on, so I assumed you worked here. For this scam, the hustlers have selected a busy park, an ideal location for what they have planned. They are there to uphold the law, which some unsuspecting motorists are about to find out. This is the speeding fine scam. And it's not long before they find their first offender. Just hold it right there, can I just switch the engine off? Did you notice the uh, speed signs here? Did you notice the speed sign here? There's one just there. It says 10 miles an hour. And you've been clocked doing? 17. 17. Can I step out of the car, please? And they're not the only ones. Do you know what speed you were doing? Uh, yes. 10 miles an hour? Okay. My well, colleague has just uh, clocked you there. 14. 14. It was Back just down. before you reached the speed bump there when you were passing that lady in a pram. Right. So, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to write you up. Speeding is a serious offence. There'll be no swaying these traffic cops. Yes, there is a speed limit. The there's children, there's animals, there's wildlife. 
and you're braking what is clearly a 10 mile an hour speed limit. Do you see the sign? Because I can see it from here. Having pointed out the speed signs to the motorists and the recordings on the speed gun, the hustlers explain the situation. You understand this is on the spot fine, you can pay it now. If you don't want to pay it now, then we can refer it directly to the police. They'll charge you a higher fine and they'll put three points on your license. Um, well, it's a £50 fine, sir, so it's up to you. If you wish to contest it, we refer it directly to the police. And almost 100% of the time, it's a three points on your license. No. People do appeal, but you have been doing seven miles over the speed limit in a park. With, again, That's with over 50 percent of the speed limit. If you were doing 11, if you were doing 12, yeah, we wouldn't give you. We'd slap your wrist and let you off, but you're you're almost doing double, and it is clearly posted. And just in case the marks are in two minds about paying. The hustlers give them some food for thought. The squirrel population is way down because they keep getting hit by cars. Yeah. Do you have children? Yeah. No. Do you have a young nephew or something? No. No? Yeah. 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 Would you like it if they came to the park, got knocked down by a car? And then uh, then you find out that actually a lot of people have been speeding, but they've been letting them off. Are you telling me you've never actually let anybody slide them? No, that's not how it works. So. Them off. The marks are faced with the dilemma of a court appearance and three points on their license or paying a fine on the spot. For most people, it's a no-brainer. The very guilty feeling marks pay up. Luckily for one, he has a friend on hand to bail him out. That is your receipt there, it says they're 50 pounds. Take care. Drive safe, please. All right, you're welcome. You're welcome. After 10 minutes as traffic cops, the hustlers have raked in over 100 pounds in cash and head off to find another location to work the scam. But in truth, the unfortunate marks should have taken the option of appeal. Because had they turned up any earlier, there would have been no hustlers and not a speeding sign in sight. You had to talk about squirrels, didn't you? An hour earlier, the suited hustlers donned fluorescent jackets and hats, transforming them into traffic cops. They stuck a few signs up on the adjacent lampposts and with a speed gun in hand, a car park was transformed into a speed trap. I wasn't really paying too much attention to what speed I was going. I was only doing um, driving in first gear. I'm, I'm just really annoyed to be honest because 60 pounds. They had a gun which made them look legit. They had the, the police hats, they had name tags. It was like you've got two options. You can either go to court um, and get three points on your license or you can pay me 50 quid now and be done with it. You don't want to argue, you just want to you just want to pay and cooperate and be polite and not be rude in case they decide to take it further for not cooperating. I was just a little bit worried about the whole situation and wanting to get away from them as soon as possible really. The use of the uniforms and signs and a speed gun in the scenario make the whole thing really plausible for the mark. Also, with the threat of an even greater fine if they don't pay immediately, the mark is encouraged to pay there and then on the spot. On the spot fines for traffic offences such as these are very, very rare. You usually get notice and you have some time to pay the fine. And if you're suspicious about anything like this, check ID. Don't rely on a uniform and a hat. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Alex is out in a Brighton bar to see if he can win some free drinks. Right, it's for a round of drinks. It's very simple. All you've got to do is get the spoon into the cup. All right, you can use the fork. You can't actually hold the fork. The fork has to be on the table as well. And you're allowed to touch it, but you can't pick it up off the table. So the bet is to get the spoon into the mug by using the fork but you're not allowed to pick up anything on the table. Uh, 
you are picking up the fork. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Do you want to try? Go on, try. Try as they might, it doesn't look like they're going to do it. Let me show you, because we'll be here all night. Look. Ready? For a round of drinks. No, I don't believe you. All right, look. Spoon starts there. Ashley, yeah. move aside. Oh, no. Catherine, you might want to protect yourself. <laughs> Ready? Alex places the spoon against the mug and the fork next to it in a line. Then it's a simple bang on the fork, flipping the spoon into the mug. Do you want to have a go? Yeah, go on. Go on, Catherine. Yeah. It's always easier when you know how. Welcome to Waterloo Station in London, the busiest railway terminal in Europe, handling a colossal 150 million passengers a year. Most people passing through here have bags and suitcases full of valuables and important personal information. Just the kind of things a hustler would give their right arm for, or in this case, their right leg. For this scam, Jess is a wheelchair-bound traveller. Paul, a helpful station employee, and Alex, in his wig and baseball cap, is hoping to blend into the crowd. This is one good turn. First, the hustlers split up. Alex takes up position beside this information board and busy row of self-service ticket machines. Enter Paul and Jess. They need to be on hand when Alex gives them a signal. A big crowd of people like this means rich pickings for hustlers, but it also presents countless dangers. Alex is the eyes and ears of the operation. It's his job to keep watch, and crucially, to identify a mark. Although the station is crammed with people, the hustlers must bide their time and wait for the right mark to come along. Alex spots an ideal candidate and communicates to Paul that the scam is on. The mark only turned her back for a moment, but that was all it took. Her bags and the guy looking after them are gone. And by now, Alex is just another traveller in the crowd, heading for the exit with his luggage. This steal was all about finding the right mark and split-second timing from all three hustlers. Taking his cue from Paul and Jess, Alex changed position, moving behind the mark. As soon as they moved just towards the board, Alex stepped in to take the bags and headed straight for the adjacent exit. And by the time the mark had realized her bags were gone, Paul had disappeared behind the ticket machines. Her luggage had seemingly vanished into thin air. Of course, the girl with the broken leg that she so kindly helped didn't see a thing. Me 
The Mark has no reason to disbelieve Jess or connect her with the theft of her bags. Distraught, she's left to explain to her friend how a simple good deed for a fellow traveller has resulted in her handbag and suitcase being stolen. This woman came over in a wheelchair and she said, could you roll me over there? And the man in the yellow jacket was standing in front of me, so I said to him, is it okay if I leave my suitcase here because I know of the bomb scare, you're not allowed to? He said, yeah, I'll look after it for you. So I wheeled her from here to there, turned back around in my suitcase, some brown handbags gone missing. I was literally like 30 seconds, if not that. I assumed he worked here because he had like a yellow work jacket thing or like a bright colour one, so I assumed he worked here. This is a classic distraction steal. Who's not going to want to help a lady in a wheelchair? Also, we have Paul in the high-vis jacket, who reassures the Mark that there's somebody who's official looking around, so no one's going to try and steal their bags. Thieves will try anything to take your attention off of your belongings. So this type of scam is actually very, very common under many different guises. But no matter what the situation, never allow yourself to be separated from your bags. In this instance, by all means help people, but make sure you look after your property. Leaving bags unattended is a security risk. And secondly, they're an easy target for thieves. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, one lady gets the shock of her life. Has the hustler been hustled? Excuse me, did you take my money out of my pocket? And Caprice gets stage fright. I froze, I don't know, I don't know what to say. All the people on this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. After a hard morning shopping for baby clothes, heavily pregnant Jess needs to take a load off her feet. She decides to have a well-earned rest in this quiet cafe and gets set for some quiet time with her favourite magazine. This is The Decoy. Her battery's recharged, it's time for Jess to get on her way. But first, she needs to settle the bill. Oops. Oh, excuse me, can you help me please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm a little bit immobile today. In her condition, Jess can't possibly pick up the coins. But luckily, some sympathetic fellow customers are only too happy to come to her rescue. I promise I'll do it again. <laughs> Hi. Eventually, Jess gets her stuff together and leaves. A little later, those helpful customers make an unwelcome discovery. It seems the handbag they put safely under the table has disappeared. They can't understand how it's happened, and the cafe owner is unable to help. 
Then, just as it's dawning on them what they've lost. You already here lost the bag? That's my bag. What a stroke of luck. A guy coming out of here, running down the street. But if that kind-hearted workman looks and sounds familiar, it's because it's Alex. Is that yours? Thank you. Yeah? I mean, he just, he rammed through it, ran away. Everything's there. Well, lucky you then. I've carry a lot of things with me, All right. you know? Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. So how did Alex get his hands on their missing handbag? To find out, we need to go back and take another look at Jesse's moment of clumsiness. When Jess dropped her change all over the floor, you may have spotted another customer sitting nearby. Paul. Jess had deliberately positioned herself so that when the marks turned to help her, they would turn their backs on Paul. I didn't do my A few seconds were all he needed to grab the handbag and stuff it in his own bag. Thank you so much. Oh my star, thank you. Before helping to return some coins. Excuse me. Pushing past Jess's helpers, and making his exit. The commotion caused by Jess had provided the perfect cover for Paul to commit daylight robbery. Alex was parked up around the corner and after giving the marks 10 minutes to discover the theft, it was time for him to play the knight in shining armor. You already here lost the bag. Having thought the bag was gone forever, the marks are mightily relieved to see it again. No. The thing, the phone is not there. The phone, two phones. Her cards, cash and house keys are safe and sound. But it's not all good news, as she discovers both her mobile phones are missing. So have the hustlers really concocted this elaborate scam just to steal a couple of mobile phones? Of course not. The theft of the handbag was just act one in a much bigger drama. As the marks are soon to find out. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I They give you the inside track. Doesn't feel so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see him walk away like that. I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is actress and model Caprice. I mean, I don't know what to anticipate. I have no idea and I'm going to do something that I've never even thought of, you know, vaguely doing before. I think it's horrible, I actually, to con somebody and to steal from them. So, I don't know, we'll see. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. It's time for Caprice to meet the hustlers and find out what they've got planned. We're going to see how, um, easy it is to pass counterfeit notes around because you're going to be passing them okay it's the currency switch her challenge is to go to a shop with a real 50 pound note buy something and receive two 20s in change then she'll have to switch the two genuine 20 pound notes for the fakes without being seen Do that. i'm going to show you they're going to hold the notes between your uh, middle finger and your index finger just like this that goes underneath here you take them, and without even looking at it, you put them underneath here, and you say, actually, can I have tens for these? Now, Once she's done the switch, she'll then have to pass off the counterfeit notes to the shopkeeper. Oh. Jess is going to come with you. Let's do it. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Jess will create a diversion when Caprice does the switch. Plus, she'll be there as backup should anything go wrong. Okay, cool. Do you want to walk in now? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, darling. See you. The girls stagger their arrival so they don't look like they're together.
Priest needs to make sure she doesn't spend over £10 to guarantee she gets two twenties as change. If the shopkeeper gives her anything different, then Caprice has to say she prefer twenties instead. This is it. The shopkeeper pulls out two twenties. Jess is ready to do her distraction. Now can Caprice do the switch? She's done it. Now she needs to ask for the change and attempt to hand over the counterfeit notes. Thank you. <laughs> you know, can I just, do you have anything smaller? Can I get, do you have like fives and tens? I didn't give you that one. That's the one I gave you. Hey, you know, that's the uh, dodgy notes. She's been rumbled. The notes are sticking out from beneath the notebook. Caprice needs to get herself out of a sticky situation. I can see my notes is over there. Where are your notes? There is, look. Just this one I gave you. The other hand. <laughs> Caprice is speechless, so Jess steps in. Do you check your tills regularly? Yeah, and I check the notes every single note comes in. Well, then how come you've just given her those then? Well, this is not my notes, I don't care. So I'm not going to give you a change. For the first time in real hustle history, a scam is about to end in disaster. Caprice is in danger of getting herself arrested. Acting quickly, Jess leaves to get Alex and Paul. Is she leaving? <clears throat> I don't know. Huh? She's might be with you, I don't know. Quickly devising an off-the-cuff rescue plan, the boys make their entrance. Gwyneth, please. Young lady, try and buy anything in yeah. here a few minutes ago. That's one just there. A quick flash of their wallets is enough to convince the shopkeeper that they're the police. She goes to me. The shopkeeper points out Caprice, so Paul pretends to deal with her. The hustlers have taken control of the situation. This lady try and pass counterfeit money. Is this your money? That's right. That's yeah. your money. Yeah. This is real. So that's the 50 pounds he gave me. Yeah, that's counterfeit too. Paul then throws a spanner in the works. Apparently, the 50 that Caprice used is counterfeit as well. But nothing's got past this lady yet. I've got the pen there if you want me to scrap that. No, it's yeah, check out those pens are not really. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the 50 outside with the, uh, with a proper scope. I've got the with pen this. here. Those are not as reliable as the ones that we have in our car, in our patrol car. To Caprice's relief, she's out of the shop for good, and the boys have got her £50 back, as well as the genuine £40 she received in change. It's not how they planned it, but they've got exactly what they wanted. Reassuring the shopkeeper that he'll come back with her money, Alex exits the shop never to return. Not only have they saved Caprice's bacon, but they've turned a disastrous scam into a success. I froze. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know how con artists keep it together. I was. I was so scared. I thought, oh my goodness, what did I just tell her here? These are yours. Here, take it, and then run out. I just wanted to run out. And then the guys came in. Thank God, the guys came in. Two men was came in and said, oh, we're just looking for the girls passing the dodgy knots. He took the fifty pound himself. I'm going outside and checking the knots again. And when I look outside, nobody's there. To be so calm and to think on your feet like that is unbelievable. Oh, I feel sick. Still to come. Is there a problem? Gentlemen? PC Alex finds some trouble on his beat. We'll sort this out. And today becomes this woman's worst nightmare. I think someone's going to pinch me in a moment and I'm going to wake up. This shifty character is looking a bit worse for wear. He could clearly do with some warmth and a hot drink. Luckily for him, he's found a perfect spot and enough money for a brew. Oh, a cup of tea, please. But this is not just some scruffy fella looking for shelter. He might seem skinned now, but soon it'll be champagne and not tea he'll be ordering. This is the coffee fix. Although Paul has his nose in a newspaper, he's keeping an eye on the cafe's customers. And as two of them get up to pay, Paul starts to pay close attention. 
As they exit, Paul decides to do the same. The scam is on. Excuse me, did you take my money out of my pocket? You were sitting behind me in there, yeah? I had stuff written on it. Have you got my money? The Marks have found themselves in a difficult situation. Confronted by such an aggressive character, they could do with some assistance. Luckily, a friendly copper is on hand. I had money in this pocket, and you were sitting right behind me. You know you were. Is there a problem, gentlemen? These guys took my money. I had money in my pocket. I was sitting right there. I don't have any money on me now. I wrote right, something right, on right. my five pound note. Nice to step over to the side. Just uh, we'll I'm sort this out. Don't worry, I'm sure this can misunderstand. To the Mark's relief, Alex quickly takes control of the situation. That's right. We'll sort I think this he out. Gave it to the, what are you talking about? So how are you gonna separate your money from theirs? What what was it? Five okay. pounds, ten pounds, uh, twenty pounds? Uh, I had written something on one of them. I, I wrote a phone number. Okay. And I had, I had, a st I had some, I had asked to have a tens, look in your wallet, sir. Sorry. I had 20. Alex asks for the Mark's wallets to see if they contain Paul's note that he claims to have written on. Right. Okay. I don't see any money in here. Do you have any other I money more, in your? On I have your, more than that. Can I have a look at your cash? Alex is now in possession of a wallet full of credit cards and a hundred pounds in cash. See, that's the money that I had. All right. That Let's was the money that I had. Look, look. That's that's my phone hey, number. Hey, hey, sir, that's sir, my phone hey, number hey, written hey, on hey. there. All right. Look. We're just going to sort this out. Can I ask you to stand over here? But, and sir. And even though the banknote in question has appeared, Alex takes the other wallet just in case. Oh, Gentlemen, can I ask you to come with me? Well, can I hold the money? Sir, just stand over here until I come and deal with you. You're all the same. The evidence seems to suggest that Paul is right, but with a few well-chosen words, Alex puts the marks at ease. I think this gentleman it's quite well known around this area. Just step back inside, I'll come and get you, yeah? I just don't want him to be aggravated by... The Marks happily sit themselves down in the cafe, pleased to be away from the uncomfortable situation. They now wait for friendly copper Alex to deal with the agitated man and return with their wallets. Oh, what are you saying? I'm saying that I really think this thing on my head itches. Okay. But they'll have a long wait because the policeman, the scruffy man and their wallets have disappeared around the corner and are gone for good. Oh. After spending 10 minutes trying to get their heads round what's just happened, the Marks start wondering where the policeman and the dodgy gentleman have got to. But, just like their wallets, they're nowhere to be seen. So how did that banknote that Paul had written on end up in the Marks' pocket? When Paul paid for his cup of tea, he handed that note to the waitress, who placed it in the till. Then, when the marks got up to pay, they received that note in change. Having identified his marks, Paul texted Alex, who was waiting just around the corner. And everything's in place to pull off the coffee fix. I had uh, credit cards and stuff in my wallet and about £100 in cash. Uh, I just had a lot of my driving licence, bank cards and stuff. So. When I pulled my cash out, there was actually a phone number on that note. But now they're both gone. The victim in this case is hustled because they're too differential to authority. Along comes a policeman and says, you're accused of theft and you're immediately on the back foot. You just want out of this. A real police officer will want you to stay with your property. A scam artist will want to run away. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Jess is out in a Brighton bar to see if she can win some free drinks. Really? Yeah. Can you juggle or anything like that? I can juggle. Can you do anything with a bottle? Well, can you, you juggle a bottle? Drink from a bottle? Well, how about I show you a well, trick with a bottle that can get you a free drink? Yeah. Okay. Take this bottle. Yeah. I've got the cap here. And I've bent it in half. Okay. I want you to place the cap in the bottle. Then I want you to position the bottle wherever you want and however you want. And then, don't touch it. I want you to get the cap out of the bottle. Without touching it. Without touching it. 
And if you can do that, then I'll buy you whatever drink you want. And if I can do it, you buy me a drink. He has to place the cap inside the bottle. And then, after positioning it anywhere on the table, he has to get the cap out, but without touching the bottle. So I want to put that in the bottle? Yeah. You now need to place the bottle wherever you want on the table. Yeah, and now you have to get the cap out of the bottle without touching it. What are you thinking? Because you look confused, what are you actually thinking? I haven't got a clue what to do. You haven't got a clue what to do? I would have put it like... Ah, do it if you don't move. <laughs> this is for him. <laughs> I, want, I want someone to give me a clue. You're Johnson. not getting a clue? No. Okay. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Right, okay, I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, can I just... I'm going to move you here. Okay. Just so I can use this part, okay? So, I'm going to place the cap into the bottle. Now, you saw me drop it, but I didn't say you had to drop it in. All I said was you had to place it in, okay? So, placing it in, I'm going to rest it on the edge, just like that. Okay, now I'm not touching it. Okay? And then... So, rather than dropping the cap to the bottom of the bottle, Jess placed it carefully just inside the neck. With the bottle on its side, she then blew into it. This created enough air pressure inside the bottle to force the cap out. There you go, you can do that on your mates now. I'll have a glass of wine please. Earlier, we saw a heavily pregnant Jess stop for a well-earned rest in this cafe. She then distracted these two sympathetic marks while Paul stole her handbag. You already here lost her bag? Which was then miraculously returned to them by Alex, a helpful workman. I just saw a guy coming out of here, running down the street. The phone's is not there. Too far. The mark discovered that although her cards, cash and house keys were safe, both her mobile phones have been taken. But if they thought that was bad then, as we're about to see, nothing could prepare them for what was to come. The giant plasma TV that was hanging on their living room wall is gone. Mom, sit down, sit down, sit down. The mark is so upset that she can't bear to look. But when she does... Oh my God! What? The stereo equipment's gone! No! Calm down, calm down. Calm her stereo has been swiped too. It's a shocking realisation. Oh, First, her handbag was pinched and two mobile phones were stolen. And now they find that their house has been burgled. Although that may seem like an uncanny coincidence, it's not. Everything was down to the hustlers. But what happened in the short time between the Mark's bag being stolen and Alex handing it back? And how did that lead to the break-in? The first thing Alex looked for after Paul had stolen the bag were the Mark's house keys, which Paul immediately took to a local key cutters to get copied. Meanwhile, Alex removed the phones and then found some paperwork containing the Mark's home address and phone number, which he noted down. When Paul returned with the keys a few minutes later, Alex put the original set back in the bag and hot-footed it to the cafe to return the bag to its rightful owner. Oh, here, lost the bag. That was stage one of the scam successfully completed, but they still had to be sure that the house was empty when they broke in. Time for stage two. Paul and Alex were parked across the road from the Mark's house. Knowing they'd already gone back home after the initial bag theft, Paul put in a call to their home number. Hello? Hi, my name's PC Robert Marks. Uh, I'm at Greenwich Police Station and we've detained someone who has two mobile phones. Have you lost...? Yes, that's right. You have. Claiming yeah. to be a local policeman who'd recovered the missing phones, Paul asked the Marks to meet him back at the cafe. 
so he could take a statement and return their property. It's possible, really. Okay, well, I'll try and get there as quickly as I can. I may be there as quickly as that, but if not, would you wait for me? Yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Great. Okay. See you soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Do we have to go to the cafe? Now. Eager to have their phones back, the Marks left the house within minutes. And as soon as they did, Alex and Paul got into position. However, to make sure they weren't caught in the act, the hustlers needed to keep a close eye on the Marks' whereabouts. That was Jess's job. But having spoken to the Marks earlier, she needed to swap one disguise for another before they saw her again. A quick change in a local shop, and the mum-to-be was transformed into a businesswoman. She took up position with her back to the cafe, so she could watch for the marks arriving in the mirror. And once they were there, it was Q, Paul and Alex. Uh, they've just come in now, so I think you should go in. There was no time to lose. Paul's newly cut keys worked like a dream. And once inside, the boys headed straight upstairs to the bedroom and helped themselves to a flat screen TV. Meanwhile in the cafe, Jess looked on as the Marks settled in to wait for their policeman to arrive. Next for the boys, it was a 52-inch plasma TV from the lounge. That took some shifting. The Marks were starting to wonder where their policemen and their phones had got to. Meanwhile, their top-of-the-range stereo system was on its way out the front door. When the Marks decided they couldn't wait any longer, the boys were the first to know. They've just left. Yeah, they're on the way back now. Okay, yeah, get out there as quick as you can, okay? We asked the Mark to tell us the value of the items that have been stolen. To me, it's, it's just pr it's priceless. It's things, you know, you save and save because you want something nice for you and the kids. That's what we did. The TV alone was nearly two grand. It's a top of the range, a brand new one. All the stereo equipment, you know, that's, oh God, I don't even know the amount of that. It's thousands. I don't even think that when the kids come back home from school, I can let them see that. I just leave the door closed because they're going to be so upset. <laughs> and how did she react when she found out what had really happened? Even though you told me, it's, I'm still kind of shocked, you know, even though you're like, OK, everything's all right. I'm still, I'm really shocked. I'm really, really shocked about it. I am. It's shaken me up, I'm telling you. It really has. This is a multi-layered con that plays on several aspects of human nature. First of all, there's a distraction which plays on the fact that most people would want to help a pregnant girl if she dropped the change on the floor. And when we call them and tell them that we can resolve the situation, they basically do exactly what we ask them to do in order to get the property back. Whatever the circumstances are, you should never leave your bags unattended. And if you ever do receive a phone call from somebody claiming to be from the police, then hang up and call back and make sure they verify it. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers faced the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, this shopkeeper gets an unwanted delivery, I don't know what this is, nobody's ordered it. 
Danielle Lloyd gets emotional. I actually feel like I could burst out in tears right now. And charity isn't always just about giving. Oh my God. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is the King's Road in the heart of Chelsea, home to some of the most exclusive antique emporiums in the country. Selling items worth thousands of pounds each, they cater for a host of wealthy clients. But today, they're not the only ones keen to get their hands on such rare and valuable objects. This is the surprise package. Paul and Alex are undercover as delivery men. Paul's in charge. And Alex is his Greek-speaking assistant. This red sofa needs delivering to one of the nearby antique shops. Oh, sorry. Ah! All right. Got the sofa here. This is 610. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's odd. The shopkeeper was clearly not expecting the delivery. Well, somebody's ordered it, so they haven't told you about it. It's definitely for here. We put it there. But Paul won't take no for an answer. He seems intent on giving the sofa away for nothing. Most unlike him. I'm taking it a bit for no I'm just a delivery driver, mate. I'll, we'll put it right there. We'll go fine. Just hold this open for me. Um, we put that there. Be right back. Right, then you go. All right. Yeah. Finally, Paul, the bolshy delivery man, gets his way. Here you go. Yeah. Much to the shopkeeper's annoyance, the sofa ends up in his shop. I gotta come back because I need you to sign this, so we, we gotta sort it out. All right, look, I'll be as quickly as I can. He's not happy. The sofa's an unwelcome addition to his day, but pretty soon that'll be the least of his worries. Excuse me. Paul returns to the shop to eat some humble pie. It's one of these apartments here. They've given him a six ten, but it's not a six ten. This is six ten. It seems his company has made a mistake with the address, and he and Alex need to take the sofa away. All right. The shopkeeper is only too happy to see the back of it and the delivery man. It's up there, uh, yeah, but they're not in, so. But little does he know that nearly £4,000 worth of his stock has just been swiped from right under his nose. So, how have the hustlers done it? Let's go back and see. Stage one was the delivery. For this elaborate scam to work, the boys had to time it just right. They knew what time the shopkeeper would make his regular daily trip to the post office and had to make sure the sofa was inside the shop when he left. Once the shopkeeper was well out the way, it was time for what you didn't see. Stage two, the steal. But with the shop door securely locked and the keys safe in the Mark's pocket, this wasn't a case of breaking and entering. It didn't need to be. Because Jess was already inside. Now it was a race against time. After putting on her telephone earpiece, Jess got to work. First, she went straight for a rare pewter bowl worth 500 pounds. Then, she helped herself to this bronze statue with a market value of 1,200 pounds. She'd already made the trip worthwhile, but time was running out. The shopkeeper was on his way back. In less than a minute, he'd catch Jess red-handed. The whole scam was in danger of going badly wrong. Excuse me, sir. Do you know where Parsons Green Tube Station is? But there was no need to worry. The hustlers had it covered. This was stage three of the scam. The hold-up. The shopkeeper was waylaid by a lost tourist. But that was no tourist. It was Alex. 
After delivering the sofa earlier, Alex had headed straight back to the van to get ready for this moment. A quick change, and he transformed himself from a Greek delivery man into a well-dressed passerby. Is there a nearest tube station? Fulham Broadway. It was now his job to stall the mark for as long as possible, whilst pretending to be on the phone, which allowed Jess to listen in on her earpiece. If you get to Knightsbridge, would that, would that be the perfect... Yeah. Alex's confused tourist act bought Jess some valuable extra stealing time. That's a pair of candlesticks worth a cool £2,000. Is there no bus from here? Oh, where could I take the bus from? Thank you very much, sir. It's been very kind. OK, you've got about 30 seconds before he opens the door. That was close. Hello, mate. And what do you know? Just as the mark was opening the door... It's not your place. Paul arrived to put stage four into action. The getaway. Another quick change for Alex, and he was Paul's assistant again. The mark had no idea it was the same guy he'd just been talking to on the street. And he was more than happy to watch them carry the sofa straight out the door. He even held it open for them. Oh. He said light stuff, light stuff. Of course, it's only a matter of minutes before the shopkeeper notices that several small but expensive items have mysteriously disappeared. But they, and his precious antiques, are long gone. So what does the Mark think has just happened? So I think as I spoke to the one guy at my desk, um, the other guy walked out with me. Very quickly, I didn't even notice it while they were there. He's right about one thing. The theft was very quick. But how did Jess know exactly what to go for? Simple. Earlier in the week, she'd visited the shop posing as a browsing customer. Still have a look around. Thank you very much. And whilst no one was looking, she photographed the most stealable items. Thank you. Thank you. And later in the den, whilst Alex prepped the sofa, she and Paul identified the most valuable pieces to target. Well, that's clever. I shouldn't have let that guy in at all with that sofa. You are under no obligation to accept a parcel that you don't think that you've ordered. If it's been delivered for someone in your business, call them up, check. If it's for someone in your household, do the same. And don't feel you've got to give in just because a delivery man is getting a little bit stroppy. How's it going, I'm in. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, oh I feel sick. They give you the inside track. It's not so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see them walk away like that. I felt so awful afterwards. <sighs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is model Danielle Lloyd. I'm feeling really nervous, actually. I'm not good at being a bad person, because I'm, I'm totally usually really honest, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. Time for Danielle to meet the hustlers and find out what's in store. How are you? <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, no. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You're going to steal somebody's bag from a cafe <laughs> and, uh, and come back here with somebody else's belongings. Right. This scam is called Mind My Bag. It's a classic bag snatch. But a clearly worried Danielle won't be completely alone. It's going to take three people, all working together in perfect sync, to pull it off. Take a minute. These guys are going to go and get into position. You guys are ready, right? I'm ready. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Paul and Jess head off to get themselves into position. When they've selected a mark, they'll text Danielle to make her entrance. Jess enters first. It's important that people think that she and Paul are strangers. 
Paul follows closely behind, with a deliberately scruffy look. All they need now is a mark, but all the customers seem to be keeping their bags close by. So the hustlers relax and wait. Two new customers arrive and sit nearby. This lady leaves her bag behind her on the floor. Perfect. Now, she's the mark. Jess sends a message telling Danielle that the scam is on. Jess has given Danielle exact details of the mark and which table she should sit at. Hi, can I get um, a hot chocolate please? Can I pay for it now, yeah? Danielle orders a drink and makes sure she pays there and then. This is to ensure any staff don't stop her when she exits with the marks bag. As instructed, Danielle positions herself behind the mark. Everyone is now in position. Jess will ask the girl to mine her bags, then go to the toilet. Paul will then create a diversion by attempting to steal Jess's bags. If all goes to plan, this should draw the mark away from her own bag long enough for Danielle to take it. Seeing that the mark has been left on her own, Jess decides this is the perfect moment to get the scam into action. Can you just mind my bags for me a second? Thank you. Jess has played her part. Now it's Paul's turn. Danielle's weight is nearly up. There was a girl sitting there, just her. I think she just left. As planned, the mark does the right thing and stops Paul leaving with Jess's bags. But in doing so, leaves her own bag unattended. This is Danielle's moment. She has to act now. No, but she was sitting there. Yeah. I thought she just left, I'm sorry. Is it yours? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Danielle walks straight past the mark and out of the cafe. Having returned to her seats, thinking she performed a good deed, she discovers that her own bag is gone and has no idea where to. steel was done to perfection. But is Danielle pleased with her work? I fuck me, I'm proper shaking. I feel so... I don't know how I feel. I just feel terrible. When I was walking down the streets, I could feel my legs just shaking. I was waiting for someone to come running behind me. If that was me, I'd be so upset, because like, you have your life in your handbag. I've got an SLR camera in there. I do photography, so I'm pretty much screwed now. I don't even want to talk about it. I just feel like I've done something really, really bad and I actually feel like I could burst out in tears right now. Everyone always tells you not to leave your bags on the tender, but you don't really pay much attention. I've definitely learned my lesson. I won't be leaving my bags anywhere. Still to come, Paul's not feeling too charitable. You've been told to move along. I'm just doing no, my job. I don't know who do you are. You? And it's a dog's life for this mark. There's poo everywhere, all right? This is Carnaby Street, home to countless fashion shops to which locals and tourists flock in their millions each year. And where there's people spending money, there are plenty of charity workers trying to get a slice. But whilst the majority are genuine and above board, some aren't quite so squeaky clean. Welcome 
to the give and take. You may not have heard of TRH Animal Care, but it's a cause that Jess feels very strongly about. I just need a signature, thank you very much. So much so that she's taken to the streets to gather signatures and any spare cash. Hi guys, can you sign my petition to help stop cruelty to animals? Oh yeah, of course. Thank you very much. You just yeah. sign there, that'd be great. Doesn't need two P's or one P's or ten P's or pounds or twenty pound notes or fifty pound notes. <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks guys, have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Excuse me. Considering that it's a charity that no one's ever heard of, she's not doing too badly. After all, no one can say no to an animal-based charity. Thank you very much, thank you. Have you got any pennies or anything that you don't need? That would be much appreciated as well. But did Jess spend all day in the rain just to collect a few pence and some signatures? Of course not. Because she wasn't alone. Paul was nearby, keeping an eye on things. Excuse me. Could you please sign my petition to help stop cruelty to animals? I just need to get as many names as I can. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. That's true. Thank you very much. Excuse me, this girl, she's going to ask you for money in a minute. I wouldn't do it if I were you. You've been told to move along. I'm just doing no, my job. I don't know who do you here, are. Can you please just leave me alone? Let me do my Seriously, job. Seriously, if I were you, I just wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't yeah. even give her a, your, thank your you. address. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't thanks. give you your address because yeah. you've been yeah. calling people I'm all week. I'm not asking you for your yeah, address. I told you before. I'm really sorry. It appears that Paul has rumbled Jess for the charlatan that she is and is warning people not to give her money. But why? What a weird eye. <laughs> because whilst Jess was getting people to reach into their pockets, Paul was reaching into their bags. In a split second, this lady's purse that contains her passport as well as her money and credit cards is out of her bag and into Paul's umbrella. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. And she's not the only one who gave away more than she planned. Yeah, we'll just stay away from her value. Her camera. I don't know who he is, just to... And just like that, the TRH charity is doing very well for itself. Oh my God. No, I haven't got my camera in my bag anymore. I had my camera with me today before I left my house, and then it's in the, it's in the case because I had it. I don't have my pass. Did you have it when you left home? Yeah, because I. Oh my god! Passport, card, ID. You think you're doing a nice thing, just helping out a charity, and within what? 10 seconds, not even that. My camera's gone. I wouldn't have even been able to give a proper description. All I could have said is that he had a navy blue coat on, and that is it. If you find yourself in a situation where you do become distracted, then just make sure that you're always 100% aware of where your belongings are, especially in busy areas. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Alex is out in a Brighton bar to see if he can win some free drinks. We've got a little challenge for you. Whoever can do this, I'll buy them a drink. Oh, okay. If you can't do this, you buy me a drink. Okay. Alright, fair enough? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> now to even prove that I can buy a drink. <laughs> there you go. So look, the idea is you've got to grab that 20 from underneath that bottle. The bottle can't fall over and you're not allowed to touch the bottle. What? Go on, Stevie, you go first. So you went for the speedy magician sort of tablecloth thing. Okay. A bit slower for Ashley, okay. Okay. Alright, okay, that's Ashley's go there. Get the 20 quid, but the bottle can't fall over. Alright, time's up. Ready to show you? Okay, hands off the table, please. 
20 pounds from underneath the bottle without the bottle falling over. Ready? Oh! That is good. That is good. That Thank you. Well good. All it takes is a simple bang on the table to make the bottle jump up just long enough to quickly pull the note out from underneath. So now you owe me um, a beer. Excellent. I'll put this. <laughs> They say dogs are a man's best friend, and nowhere more so than in Britain. We love our pets so much that as a nation, we spend hundreds of millions of pounds on them each year. But an owner's weak spot for their pets is a chance for hustlers to make some money, as they're about to demonstrate in the missing dog scam. Jess has come to the park, seemingly working for the local council. Excuse me, I'm doing a survey about the local dog walking facilities in the park. Do you mind just answering a few questions for me? Okay. Is that okay? Can I uh, take your name? Uh, Patrick. Patrick. And what breed is Chelsea? A Springer Spaniel. A Springer Spaniel. So yeah. she's chipped? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Can I take your address as well, please? Uh, okay, close. I'll send you a free pooper scooper. Oh, okay, there fine. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's amazing the information people will give away for a freebie, as well as home addresses Jess finds out if people are in work and if they leave their dogs at home. And the all-important phone number. Best number's my mobile, 0773. With all the details of a handful of dogs and their owners, Jess has all the information she needs to set the scam in motion. That's great. Thank you ever so much for your time. Yeah, Have a lovely day. Thank you. One month later, Alex and Jess are applying the finishing touches in preparation for the hit on an unsuspecting dog owner. With their car turned into a taxi and a list of potential marks, Jess gets ready to make an important phone call. Oh, hi, is this um, Audrey Brown? Thank you. Oh, hi there, my love. Listen, my name's Jessica. I don't mean to alarm you. Uh, there's no need to worry. I think I've just found your dog. Oh, is he um, like, it's like white with uh, tan patches and he's, he's got, I think he's got something wrong with his eye as well. Oh, d don't worry. <laughs> Listen, he's absolutely fine. Um, I've got your address here because obviously he's been chipped, hasn't he? That's how I've got your number. Um, it says that you live in N7. Are you there now? Because I can drop him off to you. If you don't mind paying for a cab, I can jump in one now and I can come and meet you. Is that okay? Relieved that her dog is okay, she agrees. I'll see you soon. No problem. It's fine. Okay, bye. Bye. Job done. Yep, where are we going? Serpentine Street. Serpentine Street. Cafe. Third on the right. Norman. At your service. You great. Alex and Jess leave to return the Mark's dog and get some cash in the process. The fact that there's no dog in their car doesn't faze them. They arrive at the cafe to meet Boo Boo's owner. She's already agreed to pay for the fictitious cab fare, but she's going to have to cough up even more. I need, to, I need to somehow clean that. The little thing was nervous, though. Unfortunately, on the journey there, it seems that Boo Boo has had a little accident. It stinks in here now. Yeah, I know. Jess's pregnant appearance is an added convincer. After all, who would think a pregnant lady is up to no good? It's your little doggy. There's, he's had a little bit of an accident, he's done a bit of a poo in the car. Oh, so my boyfriend's just jumped out with him, there was like a, a grass green at the top, but the taxi driver wants a bit more money, I'm afraid, and he's getting a little bit miffed off, I'm afraid. Right, well, well you're going to sort this out, because yeah, I need to yeah, get these I'm seats sorry, to but he was obviously just a little bit nervous, that's all. I can't pick up any rides, I can't do anything right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, well, How much do you want? Well, it's 30 quid to get the seats dry cleaned. And it was £20 pounds 30, to get here? £20 pounds to get in, Is 30 okay? quid, because I've got to go and pay this up right now. Calm down. Um, I don't know if he's going to be coming from this way or this way, so I'm just going to walk up there. Can you just wait here? Oh. Me might be coming down here. Jess goes off to look for the dog, leaving the mark to sort out the payment for the fare and the unexpected damage to Alex's car seat. Where's she going? Uh, who's paying me? I'm just going to go meet my boyfriend. Hi, are you paying me? Yeah. Is that OK? Yeah. So we have to pay you £50. Pounds. Look, I don't take dogs, all right? And I took that... I took that... Sorry, let me I took it as, for, as a favour. There's poo everywhere, all right? Listen, listen, I'm not going to argue with you, Let all right? see what needs to be done. Here, I had to spray the whole thing with air freshener in there, but I need to go and work. So could you play, pay me my fare and I can go? It's all right, darling. I've Thank you very much. 
Alex got more than he bargained for with this mark, but is making off with 50 quid, leaving her waiting for Jess to bring back her boo-boo. But Jess isn't looking for boo-boo or her boyfriend. She's jumping into Alex's car, and they're gone for good. Hold on, Jess. Where to next? It's no wonder Alex didn't want the mark to look closely at the mess on his car seat. It was fake dog poo from a joke shop that Alex squirted into a bundle of tissues before they set off. The mark is still looking for her dog, but she won't find him because, of course, her precious boo-boo is safely at home where she left him. But she said the dog was in the green up the road, but I went up to the green and the dog is not there. The cab drivers were getting very angry and he wouldn't even let me look in the cab to see the poo. It might be a scam crystal because she hasn't turned up with Boo Boo. At the time I was so confused and I was worried about the dog so much. I didn't even connect everything together. Once you start involving a pet in a scam, common sense reason goes out of the window and people start thinking with their heart rather than their head. All they want to do is get their pet back. They need to stop, think, have they really got my dog? Might take a few minutes, but I'll wait. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, Dodgy Jess gets caught red-handed. Oh, Ian Lee gets a guilty conscience. I feel genuinely terrible. And Alex takes flight at the airport. Bye-bye. It's a scam. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. It's a busy evening in this popular bar. These happy revelers are out to relax and have a good time with their friends. Little do they know that for some of them, the evening is about to turn sour. This is the DVD Extra. Jess is on her way to the bar. But she's not here to socialize. Do you watch movies? Yeah. You're interested in some buying some really good copies. We've got them straight from Thailand. Three pounds each. Um, I've got. Looking like she's come straight from the market, Jess has got a bag full of pirate DVDs. Oh. The, uh, the Vinci Code, have you seen that? No. <laughs> I'll make you a little pile anyway. Things. That one, reader? No. you interested in any of these ones? The three pounds each, or two for five, or three for seven. Yeah. Really Jess's rock-bottom prices and persistent manner have paid off. Hey, you'll love that. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs> this lady buys two discs for five quid. Jess's next customer isn't so amenable. Just the one. That's three pounds. <laughs> he buys just one DVD for three quid. Are you interested in any DVDs? Good copies. And these guys take a bit of persuading too. Okay, that's uh, three pounds. Another meagre three quid for Jess. DVDs. Yep. Have you seen it? She presses on, but it's slim pickings in this pub, and at this rate, Jess is in for a long night. You sure that was pretty quick? Yeah, that was pretty quick. That is um, two, four, five pounds. No, only selling a DVD to a police officer. You're oh, you know what? You are recognised you Bye, from boys. somewhere. It looks like her long night might be spent in a police cell. But this scam hasn't just come to a premature end. It's about to get started. Because that undercover policeman is Alex. 
And he's not the only plainclothes copper in the pub. Can I ask you All from right, boys, somewhere? Bloody hell. No, Paul and Alex had been there all along, keeping an eye on who bought the dodgy discs and waiting to make their move. This has happened again and again and again. I'm not even going to read you your rights because you know you bought one. You know what? I knew I recognised you from somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Now sit down and be... After slapping the cuffs on Jess in full view of everyone... Everybody else? ...the boys start dealing with her customers. Sit down and be quiet. You. Shut it. All right? Right. That's a miracle right there. You bought a couple? All right. Did you buy a couple? Uh, But they're not interested in making more arrests. They're here to make money. It's an on-the-spot find. Usually buy DVDs inside a pub. The boys' fake ID and confident manner quickly convince the Marks that this is a genuine police raid. Okay, can I have the DVDs? And to avoid any complications, the local police force have been made aware of this scam taking place. Okay. What's your second name? How many did you buy? Two. The boys take back the Marks' DVDs as evidence. All right, Daniel, you've got an on-the-spot fine of £50. You can pay it or you can come with us. Your choice. Apparently, the offence of buying a pirate DVD carries an on-the-spot fine of £50. Sign there. Okay. £50, please. As a further convincer, each mark is made to admit liability by signing an official-looking piece of paper. All right, boys, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to find that money. These boys are struggling to find the cash. You boys found the money yet? He's lost his wallet. This guy's lost his wallet. You've lost your wallet? But Alex wants the money now, so he quickly comes up with a plan. So there's an ATM, I suggest you use it. Your friend stays here and come with me. He's so determined to get his hands on their cash, he's going to escort the mark to a local ATM. Dear oh dear oh dear, how much you make today? Anxious to avoid handcuffs and a trip to the local Nick, the Mark is more than grateful for the opportunity to withdraw the cash. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, Paul collects the two fines from the other Marks. Total, £100. Can you get these handcuffs off me, please? Excuse me. Hello? Can you please get these handcuffs off me? The hustlers are almost home and dry. Come with me. I bet you're getting sick of this. Come on. I'm sick of arresting you Can all you not week. Please not grab me like that? All that's left to do now is for Paul to relieve the final mark of that brand new 50. Remember what we say? Right. Don't do it again. Right. And confiscate the DVD he bought. Ow! The hustlers have just made £150 in a matter of minutes. And once the cuffs are off Jess, they're free to hit another bar down the road. It's going to be a lucrative evening. I don't even know where the police came from. They were just kind of, one minute she was sending us Steve D's and then she walked away and the next minute they just came out of nowhere. So I think they were already there, but I wasn't really paying attention. I was paying attention to her. It all happened so very quickly and I don't think you really had time to sort of like think, oh, hold on, what's going on? It was like... Get your money out, stop yeah. you getting carted away. Basically, yeah. Well, it's a fixed penalty notice from the Met Metropolitan Police. Notice of opportunity to pay fixed immediate penalty. Criminal Justice and Police Act. He signed it and I signed it and gave it to me. If they're running that kind of scam and doing 150, the, the minimum in each pub, they're on thousands. Many people are tempted into buying pirated DVDs because of the rock bottom prices. But the hardest bit about this scam is not getting people to buy the DVDs, but convincing them that we are real police officers. Now, arresting Jess in front of everybody is the biggest convincer because it's so brazen. It's done in broad daylight in the middle of a pub. And that's what makes the scam work so well. The best way to avoid this situation is not to get involved in the first place. Don't buy pirate DVDs or anything that you know to be illegal. And that way, scam or not, you're not going to lose any money. How's it going, I'm in. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I feel They give you the inside track. so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. As soon as you see them walk away like, 
I felt so awful afterwards. Oh, oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is TV and radio presenter Ian Lee. I don't like tricking people or confusing people or conning people. I think what I'm going to bring to this is a sense of, of failure and doom and perhaps the first uh, real hustle that goes completely wrong and end up in prison. I don't trust oh, yeah. anybody. Hey man, how's it? It's time for Ian to meet the hustlers and find out what he's got himself into. I'm really nervous about all of this. Really? Yeah. What are you going to make me do? Right. Basically today, yes. you're going to be robbing a house. The easiest way to rob a house is for them to let you in the house. So you're going to be posing as workmen. Oh, you're so From bad. a waterboard. Yeah. Got your little ID here. Oh, you have look. So Ian will be taking part in the bogus workman scam. He has to get the three of them into a Mark's house, claiming to be working on nearby water pipes. Whilst Alex and Paul steal everything they can, Ian has to keep the Mark busy upstairs with the story that they're running a die through pipes to see which water pipe belongs to which house. When Alex and Paul are done, they'll call him down as a cue to make their escape. We're to see how you do it. All right. The other <laughs> thing we need to point out, yes, sir. you're going to have a toolbox. There's a little hole there, that's a oh, little camera. Look, that's fantastic! Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Good. Okay, All see right. your coat on. Let's go. You got your badge. Ian gets into costume. With a fluorescent jacket, ID badge and toolbox, he looks the part. Oh, that's me. Oh, All right. Oh, dear. We're going in here? Yeah. Oh, I'm scared. Time to whisk him away and throw him into the deep end. They pull up outside a selected house with a workman's tent nearby. It's the perfect cover for their story. Ian's had a nerve-wracking 20-minute journey to try and think of how to keep the mark busy. He's got the hardest job, as he must do all the talking, and as he's no past experience of plumbing, he's going to have to improvise. But first, he has to get them into the house. It's showtime. Hello, sorry to bother you, we're from the water board. We're testing the flow of the water out there. We've just stopped, dropped some purple dye into the pipe, so we need to check whether it's coming into this house or next door. Could we just pop in and have a quick look? Is that all right? Thank you very, very much. They're in. Uh, this is the kitchen through here, is it? Yeah. If we can just have a Before quick look. Check upstairs. Oh. Sorry, my love, what was your name? It's very nice to meet you, Aaron. Uh, is it all right if I leave you down here? Just let me check this, yeah. Can, we just, can you show me where your bathroom is upstairs? Paul stays downstairs, pretending to watch out for the purple dye. So far, everything's going to plan. You're not working today? Oh, OK. As soon as the mark is out of sight, Alex and Paul get the swag bags ready and get to work. It's now all on Ian to keep the mark occupied. If she leaves the bathroom, it's all over. This is the, the only upstairs uh, water facilities you've got, is it, Amin? Now what it is, I'll explain, we've got a purple dye that we have to do to check for any leaks and any bacteria that may be coming through the water. Can we just run this for a couple of minutes? Alex and Paul's bags are filling quickly with laptops and mobile phones as Ian keeps the mark occupied. Now it's either in this house or number eight. Uh, we'll find out where it's coming through. If we can just turn the shower off, we can get the bath going. I think the bath is going to uh, be more important. Let's see. The hustlers are cleaning the place out and Ian seems to be holding his own. You've got very low water pressure, which is... Uh, which is a shame. Do you ever do you suffer with low water pressure? Spotting an Xbox, Paul makes one final steal. It's nearly time for them to make their escape. Running out of things to say, Ian resorts to small talk. You're not studying today then? You're not getting any...? I've got revision today. Oh, revision? What are you revising for? Yeah, um, exams and exams. Revising for exams, yes. You'd, yeah. you'd need to, I suppose. The hustlers have taken all they can, so the three of them need to get out without the mark suspecting anything. You want to check this down here, boss? There's nothing but a bit of grit. That's Ian's cue to leave. OK. Now he needs to come up with an exit plan. We might be able to do something with that today, actually, because it could be something. There's, 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 there's a connector uh, dangle out there that could be. Have you given him the cue to get out? I did. I said, come down. But Ian seems to have missed the cue, and the guys are getting concerned. With the van full of valuables, they need to get away fast. Paul goes in to try again. Can I just get you to come down and look at this for a second, Jeff? Sorry? Can you come down and look at this for a second? Okay, listen, uh, can you just keep an eye on this? If you see any purple dye, could you just shout nice and nice and loud? 
Start the van. Go away. Oh, oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. It takes three minutes for the Mark to give up looking for the dye in the water and finally go downstairs to see where the three workmen have got to. It doesn't take long for her to realise that her laptop, along with everything else, have disappeared, along with them. I feel genuinely terrible. She was such a sweet girl and she was so open and let us in and I feel really bad. You've made me feel really bad. <laughs> they made me go upstairs and have a look, see if I can see any dye in the bath and there was nothing there. And I saw them coming out through the window. So I followed them down and they've gone and I realised the laptop's missing. I tell you what was surprising was how quickly they did it. That was the, the worrying thing. We got the first call saying they'd finished and I didn't think they'd finished second call and they've got laptops, Xbox, iPods. Oh man, I couldn't be a professional blagger or burglar or anything. I feel so awful for that poor girl. I'm really sorry. Still to come, the hustlers go on a recruitment drive. It makes me feel like a complete and utter gullible mug. And Alex takes more than just the stress out of travelling. That's the whole service. Bye-bye. This is Soho Square, just a short walk from London's Oxford Street. Perfect for what the hustlers have planned. They've rented a couple of rooms in this building to set up their new company, TRH Consumer Research. This is Mystery Shopper. TRH Consumer Research is a company that works with the high street shops and reports to the top management about how the shop floor is performing. They do this by hiring mystery shoppers, people who go undercover, buy an item and then report back on the customer service. Morning. Hi Dave. Alex and Paul are only offering one vacancy and here are the wannabe employees who've come for an interview hoping to get the chance of being paid to go shopping. Hi. Morning everyone. First day of class. Yeah. Bad boys sit in the oh, back. Bad boys in the yeah, back, yeah. yeah. Okay. First of all, thank you very much for coming out. You've all heard of secret shoppers, people who go into stores and uh, basically make reports on what they see. That's you guys. What we're going to ask you to do is, I'm going to give you these cards in a minute, and they just have a simple request on them. So this one's, for example, HMV, uh, buy an Xbox game for a child, uh, uh, value in the region of £30. When you come back, we're going to ask you to fill in one of these research questionnaires. Based upon this, we will see whether we can work together and you can become one of our agents and use you further. The hopeful employees head off to the nearby shops. All except one. Jess was just there as a convincer. Knowing there's only one job on offer, they'll have to give it their all. Everyone has been asked to buy the specific items with their own money, but nothing is over £30, and they're promised a full refund in cash. It's very unusual to be asked to spend money in a job interview, but then again, this is a unique job offer. Everyone comes back right on time, and has fulfilled their brief exactly. After all, how they perform in this task will dictate if they get the dream job of being a mystery shopper. Everyone hands over their purchases, and while they fill out their forms, Alex reimburses them as promised. Could you please all um, check your receipts and that you got your cash? Now it's time for the dreaded one-to-one -one interviews. All right, Oliver, yes. could you come with me for just a second? Yeah. Have a seat. In the other rooms, Paul and Alex interview everyone separately. Was it a busy shop? No, not really. We actually had to walk up straight to the guys and ask him where the PSB games were. Mm -hmm. And actually in that price range. But he was, you know, that he was helpful. I mean, that I got served by the manager at the counter. You know, it's a bit more knowledgeable about it. Okay, great. So we're very happy with that. Okay. And I think that we would definitely like to uh, to keep you on for this. Okay, that's now, would you be available today in the next hour to, to make another purchase? Um, well, I'm not, I do have an 
appointment somewhere else. This guy doesn't seem too enamoured by Paul's job offer. Perhaps he needs an incentive. It, it would be £250. Oh, right, okay. Um, would that be okay? The offer of £250 for his troubles appears to have done the trick. Although everyone was told there was only one job, whilst this guy heads off to the shops, in the next room, Alex is offering the job to someone else. Someone like you is ideal for us. Happy with his new £250 a day job, he leaves to make another purchase. You, when you come back, we will give you a 250 for your time. OK. OK. Yet another successful candidate. We would like you to make a purchase for us today. We'll pay you for £250. Right, OK, yeah. But we're going to ask you to go out now if you're available. To, yes. We'd love to have you available. go out for us. So half the people actually got the job. Unaware they're not the only new recruits of TRH, they head off to the shops. Everyone returns separately with the goods. Hello. Oh, hello, 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 hello. 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 How, How did, did you get, get on? I enjoy it. That's what I like. I shop anyway. <laughs> As promised, they're all reimbursed and paid two hundred and fifty pounds for their time. Easy money. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. All right. Thanks again, Tracy. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye bye. I shop anyway. So really, I'm just doing something I do every day. I'm getting paid for it. I'm well, pretty shocked I've earned 250 quid. I find it really easy and just enjoyable. But surely, that was too easy, wasn't it? Let's take a closer look at those interviews. Second time around, the products the candidates were asked to fork out for were significantly more expensive. Bring us back a console. I'm um, looking for the best package deal you can get. Something in the lines of an MP3 player. We're looking for a digital radio. It's a digital camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for a Blu-ray DVD player. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the £250 for their trouble was the sweetener. And it worked. By the time the last person left, this table had a stack of goods worth nearly £1,000. And within minutes, the hustlers have bagged up their booty and are making good their escape. But if the hustlers have paid for all these expensive items, why the quick getaway? There you go. Bank is AP and J Corporate Bank. There isn't an AP and J Corporate Bank. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> I don't know right, what else yeah. to say. It makes me feel like a complete and utter gullible mug. Is it ice steel, someone? Oh, right. Ice steel. Ice steel? Yeah. Uh, we've been stitched up by the looks of things. When somebody gives you that cheque, have a careful look at it. If it's not drawn on a major bank, if anything looks slightly unusual or strange about it, challenge it. Ask for cash. With over 177,000 yearly flights, Stansted Airport is the third busiest in the UK and the fastest growing major airport in Europe. It serves over 22 million passengers and carries 200,000 tonnes of cargo each year. And with that much baggage around, airports like this are popular destinations for hustlers. This is the Red Cap Scam. Looks like Alex has found himself a job as a baggage porter. And as luck would have it, his first customer is Jet Set Jess, returning from a trip abroad. Is your limousine on its way, Mother? I, I should call my driver, Paul. But whilst most people feel well relaxed after a nice holiday, checking into an airport can be a stressful experience. So Alex is offering a very helpful service to holidaymakers. While Jess waits for her driver, Alex has to deal with more customers. Yes, we do have a, a, a free check-in service today. I'm just dropping this lady off. Thank you very much. There we go. You enjoyed it? I feel like a movie star. Excellent. <laughs> now, basically, Thank it's you. a free check-in service. Yes. Uh, we take your luggage from here, we check it in for you, oh, you. and you get a first-class lounge uh, day pass. Thank you very much. It's all right. Don't worry. That's, this is my job here. I shall be taking this. That's, that's, that's quite nice Thank and heavy. Thank you. Um, I can take this for you. And can I just ask uh, what flight you're on? 
the chance to skip check-in and use the first-class lounge is too good an offer to refuse. And this couple can't believe their luck. It's one for you. One for you, sir. Thank you. Perfect. And follow me, and I shall show you exactly where uh, you check in. And your luggage gets checked in straight through, so you don't have to worry about it. It's all taken care of for you. You're going to go up this ramp over here, yeah. and when you come up to the top, yeah. it's zone D, which is straight ahead of you, and it's desk number 53. Okay. So it's actually, as you get up there, yeah. literally as you turn left, it's in front of you, that's the zone, okay. and it's number 53. Okay. Okay? Zone D, desk 53. 53. You don't have to take that, I'm taking that for you. Yes. That's the whole service. Bye-bye. The couple leave, happy to relieve themselves of their heavy luggage and let Alex take the strain. Taking a leisurely stroll through the airport, the couple are enjoying their stress-free experience. Hello. Hello. Apparently Hello. we're having our luggage checked in for us. The gentleman's just taken it away. Uh, well, here's our tickets. OK, what's your answer? So you've got your checking in... It quickly becomes apparent that there's no such service. But he's just nicked our bags off us. Hold on, let me just wait and see. Yeah, the red cap on. It's a scam. She's got that right. As it dawns on the marks that their luggage has been stolen. Alex and Jess are back at their post, using the Mark's luggage as a convincer for yet another customer. Thank you very much. Hi there, could I um, interest you in our check-in service? I think we've just lost our bags. They're not the only ones. As Alex takes the next customers to the entrance, Jess is unloading the first cases into the van. OK, bye. Alex has to work fast. He sent the Mark's to the furthest check-in desk, but it's only a five-minute walk to the entrance. Well, you better get down and find that man in the yeah, room. Yeah, I'm not young. There's just enough time for one more mark, but they're cutting it dangerously close. You stay there. The red cap. I'll stay Don't here. Go. Can I interest you in a complimentary check-in service? As the second mark finds her way to the check-in desk, Alex has roped in two more marks. But he's got to get a move on. He's going. OK. Thank you. Take care, have a good flight. Happy with his haul, Alex calls it a day and heads for the van. And it's not a moment too soon, as the first mark is seconds away. But he's not quick enough, as Alex and Jess are putting the final cases in the van and making a speedy escape. And with seconds to spare, they drive past the mark, never to be seen again. This was, he said, our use of the first-class departure lounge. As we came up to the desk, I said to Albert, I don't think there is a first-class departure lounge in Stansted. Well, we went into check-in and they said that they didn't know of the service. I'm obviously pure shock and horror that, um, that my baggage has been taken away. Clearly, not to have to stand in a check-in queue, that's, what, that's part of the airport nightmare, isn't it? And anybody that will offer to forego that for you, then you think, yes, that sounds like a good idea. But looking back at it, I think, why was I such an idiot? At the point when someone's going to go off with your luggage, you must ask the question, is this person who they say they are? Be prepared to look at identification tags. Look carefully. If they're not true or genuine, don't part with your bags under any circumstances. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show...
You thought estate agents were bad. You've seen nothing yet. I could cry. I could actually cry right now. I'm making me feel too nervous now. Tennis champ Greg Rosetsky faces his toughest match. And Alex and Paul go new age. They're very good for uh, getting your chakras all aligned. Older people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. Renting rather than buying a place to live is a flexible and stress-free option for tens of thousands of people throughout the UK. But it's a competitive market. Demand is high and genuine bargains are few and far between. So when you find one, the temptation to snap it up is hard to resist. This is The Interception. Jess and Paul have become letting agents for the day. They've set up a morning viewing of an apartment on the outskirts of Oxford with two students who want to flat share and are looking for a good deal. How long do you think you're going to be? I'm just about to do a flat viewing now. OK, speak to you soon. Bye. Hi. Are you for the flat viewing? Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Nice to meet you. All right, I'm Susie. Oh, What's your name? David. Oh, yeah. Hiya. What's your no, name? No. Do you want to come on through? But it's cold out there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Rob? Do you want to come on through, boys? Rob, this is Deo and David. Yeah. Hiya. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Want to show you the place real quick? Yes. Paul wastes no time giving them a tour of the place. Two bedrooms. Yeah. Two spacious bedrooms. That's the bathroom. A well-appointed bathroom. Do you guys cook much? Fitted kitchen. And, um, and this is the living room where you probably spend most of your time. <laughs> and the icing on the cake, a stunning sitting and dining room with balcony. Yeah, you know, they're, they're boxy, but the insides are phenomenal. Yeah. It looks like their dream pad. Yeah, step inside. So they happily sit down to talk business. Um, obviously, with the financial times being what they are, um, the price is, is very, very good. Um, it's seven hundred pounds per calendar month. Okay. Um, that's you know, that between the, the two of us. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so seven hundred pounds for the apartment. Okay. And, cool. Uh, uh, At that price, it's a steal. Seven hundred pounds a month between them is a rent that even students can afford. Um, basically, it's going to be on a first come, first serve basis. Yeah. Um, you guys are actually the first to see it. So, oh, yeah. okay. what do you think? We. I, mean, I like it. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty the best one I've reviewed so yeah. far. Like. I, 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 yeah. I think. I think it's alright. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to do it on video? Yeah. As, as quickly yeah. as that. You yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yeah. Knowing the marks have taken the bait, Paul hits them with his requirements. Uh, in order to secure the apartment, yeah. what you need to do is you need to um, illustrate to us that you have the access to the funds. Okay. The quickest way to do that is simply to transmit money to yourselves yeah. by a money transfer. Okay. So for example, you take money and send it to, to David, right? Okay. Once you get that, David doesn't take it out. You then fax us a copy of the receipt. Yeah. You can then take that money right back out. Okay. And it's yours. Okay. Um, that way you don't give the money to anybody you don't trust. Yeah, it's always definitely. between you guys, yeah, but we know it's like good. Does that make sense? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So to secure the flat, the boys need to show that they have access to a month's money. They must do this using a wiring service to transfer the £700 from one to the other. It's a system where cash can be sent to someone and then accessed within minutes anywhere in the world from agents of the wiring service, often in small independent shops. Once the marks have faxed Paul the receipt of the transfer, the flats will be taken off the market. Fax that um, to this number here, okay? okay? But also call me. What I'll do is I'll call the office, make sure that fax is right, and as soon as they have, I'll stop over you. Right. Fair enough. All right, so here's my, uh, here's my phone number here, telephone number. That's the fax number you want to send it to, okay? And that's the place that you want to go to. All right. All right? Cool, I'll send it. It couldn't be simpler. Paul's even given them details of somewhere local that they can do the transfer. There's no time to lose. They head off to follow Paul's instructions and make sure they don't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. True to his word, one of the marks goes to the place Paul recommended to deposit 700 pounds in cash to be transferred to his mate. 
and then fax Paul the receipt as proof of funds. And as instructed, he then calls Paul to let him know it's done. Hi. Great, great. So you've sent the fax and uh, what I'll do is I'll call the office. Yeah, yeah, everything should be fine. Why don't you just give it, uh, give it an hour or so and then just go and pick the money up and uh, put it back in your bank. Great. Okay. Bye. With the deal apparently almost done, it's time for the other Mark to withdraw the money left in his name. But their day, which started so well, is about to turn into their worst nightmare. It soon becomes clear that something is wrong. In fact, their £700 transfer credit has disappeared. There's nothing they can do to get their money back. But how can a large sum of money left in a secure electronic account for one individual to collect simply vanish into thin air in the space of an hour? They're, they're saying that we can't retrieve the money. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this before, so I don't know. I'm very, I'm very, very confused right about it. I don't even know what's going on, and he's telling us that we have to wait till half five to see his manager on. Once Paul and Jess had done their jobs, it was all down to Alex. He simply scanned in his own driving licence and altered the copy, so the name matched that of the mark receiving the money. He then picked up the transaction receipts, which the mark who sent the money had faxed straight to the hustlers. He now had all the paperwork required to withdraw their money. But not leaving anything to chance, he also donned a lab coat and a fake NHS ID badge bearing the mark's name. After all, who wouldn't trust a doctor? As electronic money transfers can be collected from outlets anywhere in the world, Alex headed for his local news agent. Hello. Hello. I need to uh, pick up that. OK, yeah. He knew he had just under an hour before the marks would try to withdraw their cash. I have a photocopy of it, my driver's licence, would that help? First, he had the ID that matched the intended recipient of the money and a backstory for why it was a copy. No, I, I'm sorry, it's just that I had my wallet stolen and I've had a friend send me some money. Yeah, no, they broke into the car, took the wallet, took my medical kit, took pretty much everything. Then, after providing the transaction number from the receipt... £700. Yeah. It was just a matter of minutes before the shopkeeper was handing Alex every last penny of the Mark's money. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Not a bad morning's work for the hustlers. We suggested to the Marks that their cash had been stolen by the letting agent. No, no, no. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to... No. But how can that be possible, though? You faxed in the receipt, yeah? I faxed, the yeah, I faxed the him the receipt. You obviously had the look. It's, there is the number, mate. This is the receipt. This is what I faxed him. The guy, bro, he's, he's, he seemed like a genuine guy. And the, and the woman as well. I, I can't say, I couldn't put a word. I, obviously, I don't know these people, but from, you know, first, first time approach, they seemed fine to me. They seemed fine. <laughs> I could cry. I could actually cry right now, mate. I could cry. It's emotional. It's very emotional. What's really clever about this scam is that the mark is lulled into a false sense of security when sending the money. They're sending it to a friend or a relative, therefore in their mind making it impossible for any hustler to get their hands on the cash. Remember that while money transfer companies can be extremely convenient when you're sending cash abroad or to friends, they're also a favourite amongst fraudsters for getting money from their victims. If you are going to give somebody information pertaining to one of these transfers, make sure you find out exactly what information allows someone to take the money. And remember, that money could be taken out anywhere in the world. The 
the life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some, so who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, they give you the inside track and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. As soon as you see them walk away like I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is former tennis world number four, Greg Rosetsky. I'm feeling a little bit uh, nervous and excited at the same time because I really don't know what's going to happen. When you're kind of clueless, it makes it more interesting. I think everybody's been hustled once in life, but we learn from our lessons very quickly. So we try to spot the hustler, but the good hustlers you don't actually see coming. Greg won't be clueless for long. It's time to meet the hustlers and find out what's in store. So what we're going to do today is we're going to illustrate one of the key differences between a hustler okay. and a thief. Okay. If a thief takes something, we're going to try and get someone to give you a large amount of money. Okay. It's pretty simple. The idea is, is that they're expecting, hopefully, security to come in and pick up some money. Okay. And uh, before the real security gets there, you're going to go in and take the money. Okay. How are we going to convince them, though? So Greg's challenge is to walk into a shop imitating a security man and make the shopkeeper hand him their takings. In order to look convincing, he'll need a few props, an ID badge and a clipboard, a secure money box, and most importantly, an authentic looking uniform. You know, it's not sexist, but... Here you go. Okay. Looking good. Excellent. Greg's as ready as he'll ever be. We don't know the layout until we walk inside. We've right. scattered it from the outside. Don't make me feel too nervous now. No, no, no. Let's do it. Your clipboard. Wonderful. Thank you. Good luck, boys. Thank you. Bye. There's no turning back now. The hustlers have selected this busy jewellery store as Greg's target. They've been watching it since it opened this morning and are certain that today's genuine money pickup hasn't already been made. Alex will accompany Greg into the shop to add authenticity and keep an eye on proceedings. But it's Greg who'll have to approach the shopkeeper and take the money. This is an audacious scam which requires plenty of nerve. To pull it off, Greg will need to be businesslike and avoid getting into conversation. And there's another crucial reason why Greg can't waste any time. The real security man could turn up at any moment, and if they're still inside the shop, this scam will be well and truly blown. This is it. Morning. Here for the pickup. First impressions count, and so far, the woman clearly believes they're genuine. Just need your signature and your name and the amount, please. Shall I put this in secure? Greg seizes his chance. As soon as the bag of money's within reach, he grabs it. The shopkeeper gives it the briefest of glances and then carries on. There's still no sign of the genuine security man. Okay, thank you. That's 11.7. But Greg doesn't want to hang around, and he's certainly keeping the chat to a minimum. He just needs to give her a receipt, and he's done. Thank you. And in less than a minute, he's out of there. Greg's just convinced the shopkeeper to willingly hand him her takings, and made a potentially treacherous sting look easy. So how has committing daylight robbery made him feel? It was really nerve-wracking and it, it was, you know, you're very nervous about it, but you kind of just have to get into character and get on with it, really. No questions asked whatsoever, which I was quite surprised about, because they gave over a lot of money. I kind of feel like, how do we get away with that? And I want to give the lady back her money right away because I, I feel really sorry for her. So hopefully she'll learn from this lesson and this won't happen to them again. Hi there. Hi. It's a lesson she's about to learn as the real security man arrives for the pickup. 
There were two guys who were, came in a van okay. so, and they were dressed typically like you and they asked me to give them the same as you are. Do you give this kind of receipt as well? Not surprisingly, this guy has never seen a receipt like the one Greg left behind. As he calls his head office to establish what's happened, it starts to dawn on the shop staff that the first security man might not have been entirely legit. And that their hard-earned takings will never be credited to the company account. Where is the staff? Where is the name of the company? Where is... It's just a piece of paper. Did you see his ID? Or no? I just gave it to him. Did you see the ID? You can't trust anyone. We asked the mark how much money Greg has taken. £3,207. It can go up to £10,000 or £20,000 also. So in that situation, it would be very dangerous. There was every reason for me to believe that they were genuine. You know, ask a few questions. Um, make sure everything looks legit. Still to come. Think of something positive. New Age Paul turns skeptics into believers with his healing stones. He went up to them, not believing at all. Ten minutes, and I and she bought one. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Paul is out in a Brighton bar and fancies a free drink. The rule is, as far as I'm concerned, if you go out, if you buy a drink, you've failed. Okay? So this is, this is the kind of thing you can do if you never want to buy another drink again. And it's a challenge. All you've got to do is carry one of these with you. This is a, this is a balloon. It's a party balloon. Oh, yeah? I'm sure something else would work, but that'll do just fine for now. Um, party balloon. And the idea is to use this to pick up both these glasses at exactly the same time. Okay. All right. You got it? Yeah. Figured it out? Yeah. Okay, here you go. Um. So only using the balloon, pick up I the mean, glasses. I mean, you can blow the balloon so you up can hold on and get it stuck in this cup and put the cup up, but that will leave this one out. So. That's interesting. Stretch it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You are going to break something. Maybe we'll step back just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Your fingers are touching the glasses there. You guys don't want to buy me a drink, but I think the time has come. Okay, one balloon and uh, two glasses. So, time to show them how it's done. This goes I in there. I've got it. No, but it's gonna. You got it? And then you... Yeah. Oh, God. What I was thinking along those lines. Very good. Well, it does look a little rude, I'll give you that. But yeah. it does. Um... Paul arranged the glasses mouth to mouth and then placed the balloon between them. He then inflated the balloon until it gripped the glasses enough to lift them up. So, I'll have. I feel like a coin. Might as well just get a tap for this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's market day in a trendy location. A popular street market attracting millions of tourists and locals alike. Here, you can buy everything from the weird to the wonderful. And setting up shop with the rest of them are Alex and Paul. They're catering for the new age market, selling all sorts from healing stones from around the world to dream catchers and joysticks. Keep your clap to yourself. <laughs> this is the alternative. Morning. Hello. What are you after at the moment? Where are you at spiritually? Positive energy. Yeah. Yeah, look at these. They're very good for um, getting your chakras all aligned. Yeah. Oh, I believe in Oh, that's good. Okay, so you need to follow your path, focus on your goals. 
This girl is a strong believer in spirituality, and Alex seems to know what she's looking for. Whilst Paul deals with her friend, Alex illustrates the power of his stones. Now I carry a stone with me the whole time. I've um, carried it for about six years now. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Stand okay. over here. Now you're quite, I'm a lot bigger than you, right? right. <laughs> Stand back a bit. All right, look. Uh, push me over. Grab either side. Oh. Push. <laughs> Actually, you've got quite a lot of strength in you. Okay, so I, I will lose my balance. Okay. But look, this one I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and use my stone for this one. I put it in my palm, my hand. Okay, push. I can't, baby. <laughs> so you really had to try quite hard. Yeah. One more time. Push. It, it, it's an interesting. It's how, how how you can focus your energy by just using a stone. Now I. I have that feeling that my chakras are aligned and I'm stable. I'm within myself. Yeah. And that's what the girl has really bought into Alex's test. With the lady sold and stone in hand, a friend decides to take the plunge as well. Don't think about it. Follow your feelings. You're thinking about it. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Very good. It's a very, very strong stone. Very well known. That's yeah. 20 pounds for all three. That's right, 20 quid for three stones. Sun's come out and you're doing reductions left, right and centre. Thanks, mate. There you go. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Look after your chakras. Bye. Bye. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Yeah, you did. They leave happy with their deal of three stones for 20 quid. It's not long before two more potential customers come along. And would you ever consider using something like this? They're not believers. Perhaps Paul can change their minds. One of the things we do is we, we just try and show how energy flow is affected, not by the stone, but by what you see the stone as in your mind. So take, hold your hand out a little more. There you go. I'm going to push down. I can push it down. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. So we're going to put this in here. Think of something positive, something that you want to happen in your life. Close the hand. Hold it out like this. I'm going to do exactly the same, put the same amount of pressure on. It's very, very difficult now. I'm actually putting more pressure. It is, it is amazing the effect it has. So just carrying something that, like that with you can center you and put all of your energy into one very positive place. I think that's a good stone for you too. The stones have spoken. Looks like they've been converted. I'll get one of these. You can't take your hands off it. Yeah, you see? See? 15 pounds, please. Two more happy customers. There you are. Have a lovely day. Keep it in your pocket. It turns out that the stones do more than just give you strength. They also say a lot about your personality. Are you a musician? Do you play music? Yeah? Yeah. What? what are you a guitarist? Combining a bit of fortune telling along with the strength tests, and Alex and Paul sell another two stones. Enjoy. Take, take care of your stone. We will. In fact, when you can actually prove the power of the stones, they just sell themselves. Much, much stronger. You say you're not drawn to me, you keep picking it up. Well, now, you, now you've got me. You <laughs> <know>. <laughs> yeah. Mind yeah. Man. It turns out to be a lucrative day, with the stones from around the world ranging from £5 to £20. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit brown. It's a little bit brown. But with all the powers that these stones appear to possess, where do they actually come from? The truth, from a big bag picked up at a garden centre. A bag like this can contain thousands of stones. And after a bit of polishing, being put in a nicer bag and sold via some fancy fatter from Alex and Paul, the potential profit can run into the hundreds of thousands of pounds. And the strength tests? They're fake. When Alex asks the mark to push him over without his stone, he genuinely stumbles backwards, as anyone would. But when he has his stone, he subtly pushes upwards on the stick, using the principle of the deflection of forces, which redirects the force from the mark up and away from himself, allowing him to stay fixed. Paul's hand test is even simpler. Pushing down on an open hand is easy, but once the stone is in a tightly closed fist, the muscles harden and naturally put up more resistance. It's so simple but effective enough to make someone part with their cash for a garden stone. 
I literally went up to there not believing at all. Ten minutes and I... Oh, and she's bought one. <laughs> they totally understood my point of view and they made me believe that they know exactly what I was talking about. And then they were doing all these tests and things. All right, all right, let's slap them up. With yeah. the stone. Shouldn't I, be. I shouldn't. I knew. But it didn't yeah. work. <laughs> okay, well, I'm happy. Put it back. Yeah, you know that. I think they're going to make a killing, yeah. Oh, 15 pounds out of us for two stones. Nah, that's a tenner. That's a tenner gone. When it comes to buying something like this, we would definitely not recommend trusting a stall that showed up in a market overnight. Also, do a little bit of research. Everything we sold on that stall was completely bogus. It doesn't exist. If you typed any of the names of the stones on the internet, you wouldn't get any replies. Scam artists regularly try to exploit people's genuinely held beliefs. If you hold a belief that some kind of artefact has some particular significance for you, you should always make sure that that artefact that you're being offered has got some provenance. Ask to see some certificates, ask to see some photographs, where it's from, get some guarantees about it. Because if you don't, the chances are that what you're buying is a piece of rock from the local garden centre. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show... Ask and you will receive. Well, I'm just telling you now, two mechanics have gone off with your car. Lucy Pender turns hustler for the day. I was pretty relieved to be out of there. And someone gets an unwelcome visitor. We're doing spot checks on the tilts. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. The hustlers are driving around leafy suburbia, but they're not looking for a retirement home. They've had their eye on this house for some time, and a certain something parked outside it. This is the message. A few days later, Alex and Paul decide the time is right to steal the car, but they can't do it without the keys. However, they don't plan on breaking and entering. Actually, I might have to put the top up. Oh, it's not too Good morning. Hi there. Um, we're here to pick up a car from Mr. Heron. Yes, I've just got a present. Not only does this lady seem to have been expecting them, but she also goes off to fetch the keys, no questions asked. Thank you. Right. Could I ask you to uh, have a I quick just need look to at the mechanic? Have a just quick check. A... Okay, sir. Not that we're going to damage it, but we just need to uh, make sure we bring it back in the same state. Wait, everything seems to be fine. I just don't see any dings or anything. Keeps a nice, I'm happy it? to... This is pride and joy. <laughs> if I could just get you to just sign just here, I've just checked it there that there's no damage. Excellent. Yeah, we'll oh, we'll when we finish, we'll, we'll yeah. bring it back. There you go. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. Take care. And just like that, the hustlers have got what they came for. Her husband's prized possession now belongs to the hustlers. The 
woman was willing to hand the keys over to perfect strangers. Why? Two mechanics came around to pick it up. My husband already sent me a text, so I was aware of them coming. I think they just work at the garage where he takes them, but I wouldn't know them from you know, one person to the next. You make me feel a bit uneasy now. Can you just hold it and I think I'll go and ring him, is that right? No, Tom, it's me. Tom, um, just reassure me, you did send me a text saying the mechanics were coming to pick up this car this morning, didn't you? Well, you sent me a text earlier on saying, hand the keys to the mechanics for the Mazda. You did send me a text. Well, I had it about, I don't know, about an hour ago, or half an hour, three quarters of an hour. Well, I'm just telling you now, somebody's gone off, two mechanics or two blokes purporting to be t mechanics have gone off with your car. Yes! There's no good having a go at... Well, it, oh. well because I had a text. Well, it was from your phone. You better ring the police, because obviously two people have gone off with your car. Okay, right. Right, right, do. Okay, right, bye. Well, that clearly says, forgot to say, mechanics are coming around this morning to pick up Mazda for a service. Give them the keys. So, you know, that's it. Listen, don't think I'm being funny, but I don't want to continue with this. So if her husband didn't send the text, who did? For this scam to work, Jess needed to look as trustworthy and innocent as possible. This was all taken care of with the aid of a handy bump and a few props. You ready for your baby? I am. There you go. I got two today. Ah. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Having gained all the details of the house's occupants and monitored their daily routine, Jess took up position and waited, as did Alex and Paul. And right on cue, Jess's mark appeared. Excuse me, darling. I don't suppose you have a phone I could send a quick message from, do you? Mine yeah, seems sure. to just be turning on and turning off just whenever it wants to. It's all right. I think that's what happens when you try and use it in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very you much. Okay yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you. It's getting a bit cold this morning. It's freezing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah especially yeah. with the buggy. Okay. I just realised everyone's going to be wondering where I am <laughs> and no one can get through to me. You say but rather than texting her husband, Jess located the number of the Mark's wife and sent her a text instead. You're a star. Thank you so much for that. Okay. You're a okay, lifesaver. Thank okay. you. Cheers, Have a nice day. Bye. The Mark continued his journey to work, blissfully unaware that instead of helping out a sweet pregnant lady, he'd allowed a hustler to trigger the theft of his beloved car. They look terribly convincing, I have to say. They, they looked exactly like mechanics. Um, you know, they were in their overalls, one got the woolly hat, and they just looked like anybody I would see at a garage. And the fact that they made me check the car over, I thought was quite convincing as well, you know, as opposed to just taking it. Quite mm, disturbing, I think, to think that a, you can easily be taken in like that. There are many ways to create such a message. We use human nature. Jess has to borrow the phone, she's got a child, she may be pregnant. Who wouldn't help? But it can also be done via the internet. There are services that allow you to send a text and actually say who you want them to think you are when you send the message. Also, if you do receive a text message about something as important as a car, then do try to speak to that person before giving up anything of value. Don't just trust a text. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some, so who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I sick. They give you the inside track so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's soon as you see him like. I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is The Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is model and star of Celebrity Big Brother, Lucy Pinder.
I'm feeling a little bit nervous and a little bit apprehensive at the moment because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I've never hustled before, so it'll be interesting. Hello. Hello. Things are going to get interesting right away as Lucy meets the hustlers to find out what they've got planned for her. So basically, um, we put a laptop on eBay okay. to sell. We've got somebody lined up who wants to see it. Right. You're going to go meet them in a cafe just over the road. Okay. okay. You're going to show them a laptop, make sure they're happy with it. They should be because it's exactly what we said it was. Okay. They're then going to pay you. You're then going to switch the laptop for a piece of wood in front of them. Right, okay. You're going to give them that. <laughs> And then you're going to walk away with the money, or maybe run away with the money, depending uh, depending on how swiftly it goes. Goodness, OK. okay. Does it doesn't matter if I really, really screw it up. <laughs> no wonder Lucy's nervous. She's going to have to make the sale, then switch a full-size laptop computer for a worthless piece of wood right under the mark's nose, before making off with their money. Gosh. Anything no, that's, that's, that should be... You know. Yeah. It's a tricky con to pull off particularly for a first-time hustler. Are you ready? All right, let's go. The appointment's in a few minutes' time, so Lucy heads across the street to the cafe. All the best. Don't let me get arrested. What's your name? Nicole. Lucy needs to get into character, as the Mark's expecting to meet a girl called Nicole. Paul's going to sit nearby as backup, ready to step in if Lucy's in trouble. But other than that, from here on in, she's on her own. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, come on. Just a coach. Thank you. This scam might sound simple, but to get the mark to hand over 200 quid, Lucy's going to need nerves of steel. Yeah. Great, thanks no very much. Lucy uses these moments to familiarise herself with her props. A carrier bag of cables and two identical laptop bags one containing the genuine computer and the other containing a laptop-sized piece of wood. It's crucial that Lucy's switch is slick. If she fumbles it, she'll alert the mark and could get herself into a lot of trouble. All she can do now is wait. It's showtime. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'm but already there's a potential problem. The Mark himself couldn't make it, so he sent along a mate. So he is, are you just picking up? Yeah, yeah, he's going to be back in like five minutes, but I have the cash, he just gave it to me. Oh, so excellent, okay. You, Do you right. want to check the computer out? Um, have a look at it? I think it's turned on for me, I just... Do you know, yeah. to be totally honest, it's my boyfriend, okay. and I know nothing, I don't even know how to switch the thing on. Oh, really? So okay. if you, as long as you're happy to have a look at it. Lucy doesn't let it throw her. He's got the cash, so she gets right on with the scam. You know, I bet you the batteries like that. Um, he said that he was happy with her. Yeah? Mean, yeah, he said he wanted it, so. I guess so. I mean. Well, yeah, I, I bet my boy. That's the easy part over. She satisfied the mark that the laptop in the black case is real. Okay. That, yeah? Yeah, it's fine with me. I'm, I have the money, he said he wanted it, so. Okay, excellent. Well, I've got some. Uh, I've got cables to do okay. with the thing, so I think it was 200. Yeah, that's what he said. Here comes Lucy's big moment. No, you poor thing, would you like to take <laughs> my bag? No, 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 it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah, Are you yeah. sure? I'm going to hang here. I'm going to have a drink and then okay. go until it gets back. So. She's done the switch, and he hasn't spotted a thing. But this is the most dangerous moment in the scam. The case now on the table contains the wood and is in easy reach of the mark. Lucy's bag of cables might be in the way, but there's nothing to stop him looking inside. She needs to take the cash and get out of there now. It should be 200. Excellent. Yeah, lovely. Excellent. Well, I'm sorry, sorry to be I'm so short to go. Thanks very much. Hope that your friends are right. Take care, thank you. Lucy's away with the real laptop in her bag and 200 quid of the Mark's cash in her pocket. What's up, Mike? A few minutes later, the Mark calls his mate to see when he'll be coming to get his new toy. Hang on, Mike. Yeah, 
come back right now. He's got a lot of explaining to do. See, it was this, okay, um, Mike. It's it's horrible. It's not a nice it's not a nice feeling to think that you know you've you've deliberately kind of duped someone out of their hard-earned cash. I mean, I'm pretty savvy, I think, and like I had my eye on her and the laptop the entire time. So, <laughs> I mean, she was like this, like this. And here's the money, and she got up and left. I am as I can't even believe it happened. I don't even I can't believe it. I just wanted to, to keep it as quick as possible and it actually it, it was like over and I was pretty relieved to be out of there. Still to come, a night on the town turns sour. Can you take the train out for me? Yep. And our hustlers commit daylight robbery. Pubs and bars a big business, raking in billions of pounds from the UK public each year. But when people go out to let their hair down with friends, they all too often let their guard down too, especially when they've had a couple of drinks. This makes the typical watering hole a perfect environment for thieves and hustlers. This is the Bar Bluff. Alex and Jess look like any other couple out to enjoy themselves on this street full of busy bars and restaurants. But if they have their way, someone else's evening will soon be ruined. Coat. Woo! Okay. okay. Jess goes on ahead. And Alex, ever the gentleman, heads straight to the bar to get the drinks in. Hiya. Can we get uh, two bottles of your Dom Perignon, please? Jess soon joins him at the bar and discovers that Alex has just ordered two bottles of the priciest champagne in the house. That Dom Perignon costs a whopping 140 quid a pop. Shall I take this? Thank you. Thank you. Alex and Jess aren't sticking around. They've suddenly decided they want to enjoy that first class bubbly in the comfort of their own home. Thank you. But why are the hustlers cutting the night so short when Alex seemed in such a generous mood? Oh, simple. Because they didn't actually pay for those very expensive drinks. Cheers. Cheers. Pretty soon, there's a spot of bother at the bar. This guy's bar tab is way more than he expected. No wonder he's upset. His tab includes two very pricey bottles of champagne, which he and his friends are certain they never ordered or drank. But the bar staff are equally sure that those bottles were bought on his tab. This argument could go on all night, and the problem is, they're both absolutely right. Let's go back and take a closer look at what happened earlier. Okay. There was a reason why Jess handed Alex her coat and entered the bar before him. She was about to pose as a member of staff. Okay. You just, um, sorry, you just got a tab? Yeah, we have. You have, you've got a tab. Did you get given a, a little card with a number on it? She targeted this large group of customers as they were likely to be running a bar tab. Meanwhile, Alex walked up to the bar and ordered the champagne. Get uh, two bottles of your Dom Perignon, please. I think it might be mixed up with one that someone else has actually put under. I just want to make sure that everything's... Let's have a look. Yeah, here's the one that's so hard, though. Right. What name is it under? Richard Guffield. Richard Guffield. Okay, I'll just go double-check that for you, won't we, say? 
Jess's cover story gave her the perfect excuse to get her hands on their tab token and ask for the corresponding name before heading towards the bar where she joined Alex. Hello. Hello. You're all right. Yeah. But it wasn't only the group of bargoers that the hustlers needed to fool. The barman bringing out the bottles was the cue for the next stage of their act. Get champagne. What, no, but we've got a tab going on. Jess was now a customer with access to a bar tab. Well, no, don't be stupid. We're going to just do it all at the end. We're just going to like divide everything up. Honestly, no, no I'm don't. I'm going to take them over and surprise them. No, no, don't do this. Put everything on the tab. I promise it'll be absolutely fine. The barman couldn't fail to hear Jess refuse Alex's generous offer and insist on using the group tab. I'm positive, yeah. Can you put it on the tab, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Put it away. Do you know what? Yes. We won't need the ice bucket, it's going to be put fine. Put your money away, we're going to put it on the tab. Put it away. Okay. It's uh, Richard Cupfield. Thank you. And as Jess had the correct name and corresponding tab token, the barman had absolutely no reason to suspect they weren't part of the group. But you know what? Can we open them at the table, please? Yeah, sure. Because yeah. it'll, be it'll be a surprise. I'm going to open them at the table, yeah. Do you keep... Do I take this? I'll take this. Okay. Thank you. Wicked. Alright, thank you. Cheers. Jess's coat provided Alex with an ideal way to hide the bottles as he headed for the exit, leaving Jess to drop the tab token back with the unfortunate drinkers. That's fine. It's all good. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. After all, they'd be needing it shortly. The hustlers had just got themselves 280 quid's worth of posh bubbly in the space of five minutes. And they hailed a cab to take them to another bar across town to do the whole thing all over again. Cheers. We've taken a few people out from our company and uh, we've, we've set up a tab to have a few drinks and we expect to pay for the drinks we've had and, and that's all. We've had some drinks but not champagne. They wanted to pay in the beginning, they said don't worry, put in the bill. They showed me the card, they said okay, put in the bill. And then when he went to pay the bill, he found these two bottles that he didn't know anything about. I wouldn't have thought it was the, the, the owners or the proprietors that are trying to add drinks to no, our tab. of course not. No. no so, so, so in that case, there's someone else, a third party, uh, interacting in the whole thing, and that's where, that's where the problem's arisen. This scam, of course, preys on both the customers and the bar staff. And it's very difficult for the bar staff to identify people correctly especially when the bar is more busy. Any bars offering a tab service should make sure that they have a very secure system and that all the customers are aware of the protocol. And as difficult as it sounds, if you're out on a boozy night, just make sure that you do keep your wits about you. Alex and Jess are making preparations for their next scam. If they're going to get away with a con as audacious as this, they'll need to look the part. Starting with fake ID badges. They're planning to hit this food and wine shop. It's perfect as it's busy with customers 24-7 taking plenty of cash. But the shop is about to get two very unwelcome visitors, the Inland Revenue. This is the Till Inspector. Suited and booted and with a deposit box in hand, Alex and Jess look the part. I'm from the Inland Revenue. We're doing spot checks on the tills. So I need to count up your tills. So you can give me a reading. It's my colleague here. Yeah, could you give me a reading and tell me how much float you have in there? So I thought you, you were the manager here. No? Okay, just ask your manager, I'll be fine. Understandably, the shop assistant calls his boss. We'll do one till at a time so you can carry on trading. Is that okay? The shop employees don't look too happy about this surprise inspection. But who would be if the inland revenue turned up on their doorstep? Do you want me to have a word with your manager? Can I hold your phone? Yeah? Thank you. Okay. Hi there. Hi, what we're doing is uh, we're doing spot checks on tills, but all the notes get tested. It's a standard procedure, we do tracings like this all the time. Okay, he wants you again. Can you pop my ID back in there? I to... Okay, so can we proceed with this till? Can you give me a readout? Uh... It's on. Let's see. 
Thank you. Can you take the tray out for me? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And the rest, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry for this. We'll be two, two seconds. Can you run these? Yes. All of them. No, I'm going to leave these here for you. Okay. Just run the UV pen and get everything in there. Okay. Won't be long. Yep. Jess leaves with the entire contents of the till to supposedly check the authenticity of all the notes. You don't have any identification here, do you? Any ID? Like a driver's license or anything? But she has no intention of coming back. Why are you taking outside the... Because she has to put it, everything that we take, all the serial numbers need to be taken down. The dogged shopkeeper is still uneasy. Meanwhile, Jess is getting into the van with the entire contents of his till, which Alex is explaining away. If you find a serial number that has been used, that we know the money has been stolen, we can then use your CTV cameras and track the person who came and spent it. Yeah? Just, just give me a signature down there. Having seemingly placated the staff, Alex winds things up in the shop, promising he'll return with their takings. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And give me two minutes and we'll bring all your cash back. And then we'll do that till in a second, yeah? They'll have a long wait. Five minutes pass, and there's still no sign of the inland revenue. Concerned that their money has been stolen, the staff start to empty the other till, worried that the thieves may return. But 15 minutes later, it becomes apparent that the till inspectors are not coming back. They could argue till the cows come home, but it won't get their money back. And with a stash of banknotes, our hustlers head off to carry out another of their spot checks. Ask me to open the, the, the when they open the till, and then they took the money and went out. He he told me just five minutes time he came back. So five minutes passed, he didn't come. I followed him. I couldn't find him. It suddenly happened. You know, I, I couldn't even imagine. The thing to remember about this scam is that these inspections are extremely rare. But if you do happen to find yourself in one, then make sure the first thing you do is verify the identity of whoever it is you're dealing with. And lastly, never allow yourself to be separated from your cash. After all, it is your cash. They can examine it, but you can be present. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, these clubbers are taken for a ride. If there's any problems, they said phone Susie. Celebrity hustler Emma Willis gets food for thought. It's just that sheer guilt. And a hustler's camera never lies. Did it work? Told you. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. 
and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. London's West End is home to some of the most glamorous night spots in the world. For most people, opportunities to get inside these exclusive venues and mingle with the celebs are few and far between. So when such a chance comes knocking, it's very hard to turn down. This is The Stretch. Jess has got herself a snazzy set of wheels for the evening and a very dapper looking driver. She's undercover as nightclub promoter Susie and has come to this popular bar in search of some people looking to party. <laughs> we don't know no one, what's going on? Hi guys! She immediately spots a group of potential customers. What I'm looking for, you're perfect. What are you doing tonight? Uh, well, are you out? Are you staying out? Well, we were going to go out uh, to see Lady Gaga. Really? Yeah. Well, listen, you lot look great. You've got a girl, which is wicked. Um, tonight, we're doing a VIP package called Funky Butter. Yeah. We've got a limousine outside. We've got a bottle of champagne in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. you get, you get um, Q jump to get in. You get to go into the VIP lounge. You get a big jug of cocktails every single hour. And it's £30 each, and girls go free. <laughs> That's not fair. Sarah Harding's there tonight as well. Oh, my God. I can't believe this has just happened. <laughs> They clearly like the sound of a VIP night at Funky Buddha, but decide to push their luck. Twenty-five pounds. Yeah. Would, that, would, that, would that convince you? Is, Is that, that fair? fair? That I tell you what, that's not fair. That's very kind, and I will be kind to you and give you twenty-five quid. Yeah. Twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five quid each. It's a really good deal. It seems they've got themselves a real bargain. The excited marks hand just seventy-five quid in cash and then head outside to their waiting limo to start making the most of their unexpected good fortune. Um, where's the champagne? Oh, there's the champagne! Oh, gosh! I was poor! They waste no time reaching for the bubbly. It's your champagne, you open it, it's yours. And pretty soon they're off across town. The limo and the champagne are just as Jess promised, and these guys are looking forward to the night of their lives. I'll give you your wristbands so that you get in. Right, there you go, you need to stick these on. Get some. Go on, wristband. While they're enjoying themselves, Jess is hard at work. She makes sure they each get a wristband to flash at the doorman and to get themselves all the free drinks she's promised them once inside. Fantastic. It's not every night they get to travel in such style, so they make sure they bag some souvenirs. As they approach the club, Jess puts another very exciting proposition to the marks. Hang on a second. Lady Gaga's going to be there tonight. <laughs> she's going to be in, no, hang on. She's going to be in the VIP, which is on the top floor. It costs a little bit more money, but you can go in there if you want. Tenner for the four of you to go in. Yeah. Yeah. What a coincidence. Their favourite pop stars going to the very same club. And for an additional fee, they can rub shoulders with her. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh, seriously, let me pay it, but you pay birds. There you go, wicked. A chance like that won't come again. Oh, fantastic. That brings their total spend to a cool 85 quid. Yeah, just go straight in. I should just let you straight go in. Go straight in, okay? okay? Remember, Susie, get them to call me any problems, right. okay? Jess and Paul get straight back to work, leaving their happy customers to flash their wristbands and walk straight into the club. Hi, we've got wristbands. Uh, we got them uh, from a lady, um, and she got brought us in a limo. She said we're on the guest. Are you the man? Yeah. 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 Susie. They said if there's any problems, they said phone Susie. But not only have the club staff never heard of Susie. They've never seen wristbands like the ones the Marks are wearing. And that's not surprising, because those official looking wristbands, which Jess told them were their passports to an unforgettable night, were in fact made by Alex. These people have been sold wristbands by somebody. Someone called Susie. Entry. Yeah. Are you serious? It dawns on the marks that their very expensive evening has just come to a premature end. Oh, well, f off. 
but for the hustlers, the night's far from over. Oh, that's Wait, it. Who wants to put the champagne? Oh. With the deal they're offering, it's not long before they're separating some more very excited clubbers from their cash. And once they've dropped them outside a club they'll never get into, Jess and Paul can keep taking people for a ride all night long. We Limousine, got in the limousine, free it was, champagne. We got champagne when we got in the limousine, two uh, free drinks when we got there. Round and of then, drinks. And then cocktail. on every hour, I'm we so were supposed nice. to have got um, jug of a jug of cocktails. She's gone, babe. Yeah. Yeah. The woman. Um, in the limo, we had yeah. a limo. Yeah. I mean, that's my night gone, totally. That's it. It's kind of Definitely. bus home now, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. This is her. Pink hair, short bob. If you ever find yourself in this sort of situation where somebody approaches you with multiple offers and deals for nightclubs, then make sure you get that person to accompany you to the club before handing over any cash. This way you can check that the promoter's genuine and that all the offers are legit. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I feel sick. They give you the inside track. Not so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see them walk away like I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is presenter Emma Willis. I'm feeling really nervous and quite scared. I'm hoping I don't need to have brilliant acting skills because I'm not very good at that. I've seen the show, they're very good, and I hope that I don't let them down today, really. Hello. Hello. Time to meet the hustlers to find out what's in store. I'm really scared. Are you scared? Yeah. OK, well, look, this is what we're going to do. Today we're going to see how, unfortunately, how easy it is to commit Possibly one of the most popular crimes at the moment, which is doing a runner at a restaurant. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, oh no! So Emma has to try the dine and dash. But in her condition, she can't just run out of the restaurant. It's going to take more skill than that. Okay. Jess is going to be sitting in the restaurant as well, eating a cheap meal. When Emma has racked up the bill as much as possible, she'll have to walk past Jess's table and switch her bill for Jess's. Do I do that as I'm moving? Just as you're walking past, you just pause yeah. for a second. Once she's completed the switch, all she needs to do is pay Jess's much smaller bill and stroll out. All right? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> yeah, I think so. Bon appetit. Let's go <laughs> Just down the road is the restaurant. Jess will follow later. The restaurant is busy, perfect for Emma. To make this scam worthwhile, Emma has to order the most expensive dishes to get her bill as big as possible. Were she not pregnant, she could just order the most expensive champagne, but she'll have to compensate by eating for two. Can I get the hummus kebab? Yeah. And the fillet steak. Can I get the mazaka as well? Yes. Thank you. you Someone else. Is it's fine. He's just running late. Under the pretense that a friend will be joining her, she's ordered a starter and two of the most expensive main meals. Good thinking. Out comes plate number one. Thanks. With her starter well underway, it's time for Jess to make her appearance. Jess sits herself down with a clear view of Emma. I don't know if they're gonna make it, but just bring it and I'll nibble away. Yeah, thank you. Out come Emma's two mains. It's a far cry from Jess's starter and coffee worth just eight pounds. A pregnant lady eating two main meals to herself hasn't gone unnoticed by the staff. Whilst it's good for racking up her bill, this is not helping her keep a low profile. Like a the final plate comes out. It may be the sweetest, but the dreaded moment is looming. 
Timing is crucial for this scam. Jess has to make sure she orders her bill at the same time, ready for Emma to do the switch. Excuse me, can I get the bill, please? Yeah. Can you? Sure. Jess follows suit. Emma receives her bill. She's done well. It's over £60. Jess is given her bill of £8. This is it. Seeing Emma getting ready, Jess places her bill in reaching distance. Done like a pro. Emma disappears into the toilet. Now she has to pay for Jess's £8 bill and get out of there. There's no turning back now. She has to pay it. But will the waiter notice? Using her phone as a distraction, Emma makes the smart move to pay at the bar instead of paying the waiters that have been serving her. Hi, how are you? Excuse me, can I just leave this quickly? Thank you. As she turns to leave, Emma narrowly avoids being spotted by the manager who'd noticed her eating earlier. She's done it. She's out of the door after only paying £8 for a £60 meal. Excuse me. Sorry, I think you're giving me the wrong bill. I've only had a coffee and some hummus. I just, I just chicken, yeah, just chicken. Yeah, with Emma safely out the door, all that's left is for Jess to point out the mistake and pay for her food. Your colleagues made a mistake. Yeah. No. The staff are quick to apologise, leaving Jess to pay what she rightfully owes and make her exit. Thank you. Bye-bye. Leaving the staff to figure out how they are £50 down. The most nerve-wracking thing was when you ask for the bill because then you know you've not just got to sit there and eat, you've got to actually move and do something and that's when somebody might see you. When it's busy you can't concentrate everything what's happening on the th you just want to serve drinks. I can't concentrate what's happening every, every time what customers doing. It's just that guilt, that sheer guilt that you're feeling as soon as you walk out that door and praying that you're not going to get caught. Still to come, why seeing shouldn't always be believing. I feel like an idiot, mate. How would you feel? <laughs> and things get dicey for these guys. I don't really know what happened to go in, so it was a bit of a flash and then all our money was gone. <laughs> yeah. The hustlers have come to a busy car park in a popular retail complex. It's the perfect location, as they're selling a brand new product designed for car owners. And it's the answer to many motorists' prayers. This is the cover-up. Excuse me, lads. Can I introduce some anti-camera spray? Hi there. How are you? No? Do you know what this is? Hi. It's a spray. You spray it onto any surface. Any kind of flash hits it, it immediately turns black. So you can spray it on anything that you don't want to be photographed. If you, uh, if for example, you were photographing your car to advertise it, then you could block it out that way. It's for, it has a multitude of uses. The hustlers are selling a spray designed for car number plates. It claims to react to the flash of a camera, rendering the plate unreadable. This is an ideal way to protect your privacy when selling your vehicle, especially on the internet. But it also has another less legitimate, but still appealing use. Would you like to see it in action? Yeah. Here, if you stand here with the, uh, if you stand over here, face me, I'll take a photo of you. Now this part, as you can see, has been treated. This part's through, this has been treated. Uh, Alex and Paul don't expect people to take their word for it. They can prove it by taking a picture of their own treated number plate. That's what happens, the, um, the spray reacts with the flash. It sucks the light out of that one part of the light down as well. Um, okay. okay, that's uh, $24.99. The man is happily convinced and takes a can off their hands. <sighs> Anyone you like, they all work the same. He leaves a happy customer and he's the first of many. These fellas are interested as well, but are by no means convinced that it works. 
I'm, I'm pretty skeptical about this sort of stuff. Understandably, a lot. Of Understandably, people it's up to you guys. But uh, it sounds to me like it probably save you a lot of money. Even after seeing the picture of Alex and Paul's number plates, they think that something might be up. Make you a deal. I'll give you one for twenty, and that's enough for two cars. I'll, what do you think? I need it. Well, I, I can assure you it works. It's on my car. It's on that. This is your car. This is that car. Yeah. Can you take a photo of that number plate. And show me? Take a photo of that number plate for me. That car there. And I'll watch this. This guy is no pushover and is suspicious of the product's claims. But Alex and Paul are happy to accommodate his demands. Oh my God. It worked. Did it work? Robot, Told you. Yeah. We wouldn't lie to you. Paul and Alex prove the spray's amazing claim. So well do they do it that this skeptic hands over 20 quid for a can. But the doubters keep coming. Okay, we'll do it. If Alex and Paul are up to anything shifty, then the only way to prove their claims is to spray it on a stranger's car so they can watch the whole process. Yeah, go on then. That's it? Yeah. Another happy customer. I'll tell you what, you're going to be very happy with it. You have my word on that. For all it's worth. Okay. No matter what the doubters keep throwing at them, Alex and Paul have an answer for everything, making it a lucrative day for TRH Motors. So how does this spray actually work? Quite simply, it doesn't. Because it's actually the cheapest hairspray money can buy that's been repackaged. It all comes down to the camera, but there's nothing high tech going on here. All that's required is a black marker pen. Paul simply draws an oblong mark on the front of the camera lens. When taking the photo, he just lines up the black mark to the number plate, completely blocking it out. It's so simple but effective enough to sell a cheap can of hairspray for $24.99. Well, they took the spray because I was a little skeptical. They, I said, could you spray it on this car? They did. Uh, he showed me the picture and it, was, it wasn't there, it was a blur. And at that point I was sold. I'm convinced that it works. Well, it was an interesting experience. It's a product that uh, I think would be worth exploring. Hairspray. Oh, what have you bought? What have you... you bought Bolder. it, your money. I feel like an idiot, mate. How would you feel? <laughs> you can have a convincing way of selling a product. It's just your, you know, how you present yourself and how you come across that can make it help you sell a product and trying it out. But in this case, it was different. Be very, very cautious when buying any product of this type. Firstly, it's very difficult to prove that any of them work. Now, if they do work, it is implied that a lot of them are used for illegal purposes and if you get into that whole game then you've got no form of recourse. Large railway stations are busy places. At certain times of the day, the streets around them are packed with travellers and any nearby pubs are full of people, killing time waiting for their trains. They're sitting ducks for hustlers. Alex has gone undercover as an American tourist, and Paul's a commuter come straight from the office. This is The Tat. These three young guys have decided to have a pint in this crowded pub while they wait for a train. They don't know it, but they've just sat in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because flicking through his newspaper right next to them is Alex. Paul wastes no time moving in. Excuse me guys, be sitting there. Why don't I just take a There's even a spare seat for him at the table. Perfect. Pretending not to know Alex, Paul takes up his position. A short while later, Paul appears to have lost something. Sorry, I think I dropped my wallet. All right, can you pass that up? Sorry, thank you. The guy next to him spots Paul's wallet on the floor under the table. And that's not the only thing down there. It's yours, uh, no, not mine, no. Sorry. Yeah. Not yours. 
Next to the wallets, they find an apparently abandoned pair of dice. You ever go to Vegas? I go to Vegas every two years. I play dice. The thing of craps is everybody says it's an easy game to play, but... The chance discovery gives Paul the perfect opportunity to rope the boys into a conversation about dice games. Are you guys talking about craps? I'm from Vegas. I love craps. Which, in turn, gives Alex the chance to overhear them and get involved. You want to learn how to play craps? Make you money. All right. Well, it's called the tap. It's just a simple game. It's like whoever gets the highest number. So if I roll one, I mean, there's um, three. So I've got three in. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'll put a pound down. All right. So I'm almost bound to lose. But the tat is simple. Everyone puts in a pound and then rolls the dice in turn. The person who rolls the highest number wins all the money. Dice near another player. They don't like that. All right. Now you throw. I'll put a pound down, put a pound on the table. So you put a pound down as well, all right? So now you're interested, all right? You know what I mean? Yeah, if it keeps like that. But basically your money will move around and at the end of the night some will have more than others. It's a random game of chance. And before they know it, the boys are playing for money and enjoying some beginner's luck. <laughs> sure, I'll play. need like a... Plastic cup or something. Would you mind the bar? Yeah. Now the marks are hooked. It's time for Alex, the friendly American tourist, to get involved and move this scam up a gear. You only had these. That's fine. Sorry. With the plastic cup to shake the dice, the game can really get started. First, huh? Yeah. Pick on me. What do I do? Do I just put a pound in front of you? It's game on. The marks think they're in a friendly game with a couple of perfect strangers. Can I make it two pounds? Can I make it three? Three. Nice. Yeah. All right. Are we making it for a five? Five? Yeah. And it's not long before the stakes have been raised to five quid a throw, which is when things start to go wrong for the marks. Yeah! Alex's win means the marks are down big time. Money, please, gentlemen. Staying in the game is the only way they can try to win some money back. But Paul and Alex have both hit a winning streak. Oh, that's five. That's five pounds. This Mark's almost run out of cash, so Paul takes pity on him. What's that? That's a nine. That's a nine. That has got to be the best roll you've had all night. There's yeah. no money on the table. <laughs> Tell you what, you've got nine. All right? I'll bet I've beaten you, okay? Uh, I can only beat you with 10, 11 or 12. He offers a side bet with the odds stacked massively against him, so the mark can win some money back and stay in the game. Top of ten. Top of ten. You got a bit five. There is no way. Yeah. Oh, the whole ten? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Really. Thirty. As it's such a one-sided bet, everyone puts in as much as they can against Paul. Surely he can't win this one. I lose sometimes. What more can a man do? <laughs> Despite Paul's best efforts, he wins again and cleans the mark out in the process. You should do. <laughs> Alex wants one last try to win some money back. This is all I got. What you got? I got ten. He and the only mark with some money left throw in everything they've got. I oh, wish you luck, but Bad luck. I don't have any to give you. <laughs> Whoa! Half Paul's winnings go to Alex, and the Marks are happy to see their fellow first-time player even things up a bit. I'm gonna stop right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go and buy a DVD. Now the Marks are completely skint. It's time for Paul and Alex to make their excuses. That's Victoria Station, right? Yeah. And head for the exit. That was fun, but nice I'm to meet not, you. I'm not yeah, doing yeah. that again. Good luck with the uh, hey, students. Good luck, guys. Take care. Nice to meet you. Oh, you keep the paper. <laughs> <laughs> That was one very expensive drink, but as far as the marks are concerned, they've simply been the victims of bad luck. However, as you're about to see, luck had nothing to do with it. Paul deliberately dropped the dice, along with his wallet, for the mark to find. Those dice contain metal, and the hustlers were rigged with hidden magnets. Using the cup to mask the dice's behavior, Paul made sure he threw them directly over the very powerful magnet attached to his knee, which caused them to settle on the high numbers. Here's what the marks couldn't see. So even when it looked like Paul was being fair... I bet I've beaten you, okay? 
Uh, I can only beat you with 10, 11, or 12. Sure. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> when the others rolled, he could just move his leg away to remove the magnet's influence. And Alex? His magnet was attached to his left wrist. And then masked by his coat. So whenever he wanted to win, he manoeuvred the cup towards his arm, resting on the table. Guaranteeing him the high numbers required. I don't really know what happened to be honest, so it was a bit of a flash and then all our money was gone. <laughs> yeah. You said like over 100 quid Yeah, well, I lent you guys at least 50 each and you had yeah, 50, 50 as yeah, well. We so 150, 150, 150, 150 pounds. quid must have lost, yeah. yeah. The American guy actually won all the ends. Yeah. Did he? So, oh, was it the American yeah. guy? Yeah. So I guess we can't really blame the guy with the dice. Unless they're working together. They could have been working together. But you never know. We don't know. There's a world of difference between playing a game between friends in a pub and getting involved in gambling with complete strangers, whether it's dice, whether it's a three card trick, anything else, where somebody wants you to part with money who you don't know in a game, you should always suspect that it's dishonest. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition. So they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, diners get served a nasty surprise. That makes me feel a bit angry, <laughs> you know, quite frankly. Rick Edwards gets a guilty conscience. I felt like a really bad man. And who's cleaning up this guy's profits? It's a hat and a beard. All the people on this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. Alex and Jess fancy a bite to eat, and this restaurant looks perfect. But rather than eating together, they're dining alone. This is The Pass. Whilst Alex finds somewhere to sit, Jess makes a quick inquiry. If I wanted to um, book like quite a few tables, say for about 60 people or something like that, how yeah. far in advance? Would you need to know when I did that? Well, it's going to be like next month. Is, would that be enough time if I? Yeah, it would. Wouldn't it? You don't need to like. Well, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Jess and Alex have positioned themselves at opposite ends of the restaurant. Can we get a pizza. I'll get the uh, parma ham, please. And can I have a um, chicken Caesar salad, but without the anchovies? Yeah. Thank you very much. They both order their meals and spend a leisurely afternoon enjoying their food. Catching up on some alone time and generally watching the world go by. Can you get a um, coffee, please? Coffee. Can I get a latte? Fully sated, they up and leave. Happy with their slap up lunch, but also because they've just successfully scammed that restaurant and its customers. And here's how. Having previously scouted the restaurant, the hustlers source the exact chip and pin machines that they use. With the machine in the hustlers' possession, the next stage is to get it into the restaurant. Hello. If I wanted to... Um... As soon as they enter the restaurant, Jess distracts the waitress with her inquiry about bookings. This gives Alex the opportunity to swap the restaurant's chip and pin machine for his own identical one, hidden under his coat. Well, it's going to be like next month. Next month. Is that okay? I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to do it just now. As Alex and Jess wait, the restaurant is filling up all the time. 
And while it does, they make their final plans. Then all Alex and Jess have to do is sit back and enjoy their meals whilst the waiters do all their work. Thinking that the chip and pin machine belongs to their restaurant, they take payment from the customers. But of course, that's an adapted machine. Not only designed to direct the payment into the hustler's account, but also to copy the card details and pin numbers of any card that gets used. With that half an hour up, they decide to move on. Jess leaves first. Alex pays by card as well, giving themselves a free meal in the process. Spotting that the coast is clear, Alex reverses the switch, giving the restaurant back their machine and taking his own with all the details he needs to clear out all those people's accounts in a matter of seconds. But before that, they decide they fancy another free lunch with a side order of all the customers' bank details. Those customers had no idea what had just happened to them until we asked them to take a closer look at the small message from TRH, the real hustle at the bottom of their receipts. Have a nice day, TRH. That's well bad. That's so I bad. I would have never known that. It's shocking, you know, if someone had, you know, it's once in a while I'm going out to eat, but if someone had my details, they can be going out doing this every day, you know, and it's supposed to be it's a one-off treat for us. And um, that makes me feel a bit angry, <laughs> you know, quite frankly. How would you tell if it's a dodgy one or not? I don't think you can tell. If someone else had my, my information, they could be like, booking a holiday, spending, doing online shopping, anything. That's not a comfortable feeling for the customer or for the staff working in the restaurant itself. It just proves that you have to be careful wherever you go, really. In a restaurant, waiters have plenty of duties, and looking after the chip and pin machine isn't one of them. So quite often, it's left somewhere that it's very easy for someone to get access to for this scam. And the psychology is brilliant, because after a, a steal that takes seconds, the waiter does all of the dirty work for the hustlers, all they have to do is get a hold of the chip and pin machine again afterwards. Restaurants need to realise that these machines are a gateway to making cash and therefore they should be treated as cash. So make sure that you put them away somewhere safe where customers can't have any access to them. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I am sick. They give you the inside track. Not so bad. <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see what way you like. I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is TV presenter Rick Edwards. I'm particularly nervous because I, I think I stand out quite a lot. I'm quite tall. I'm on the television. I just, I feel like whatever I do, they're going to be able to identify me really quickly and go, it was definitely him that did it. And so I'll be nervous and probably sweating. I don't know if a lot of confidence tricks is sweat, but I mean, that's what I'll be bringing, just sweat. So yeah, I might be rubbish. I imagine it's going to be quite a, you know, a lot to take on board in, in not very much time. I might really let them down. He won't have to wait long to find out. It's time for Rick to meet the hustlers. Welcome, stand against the wall. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we start with a picture? Straight just in to there. Moving, okay. First things first. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Hi, Rick. Rick needs the lowdown on today's con, and the hustlers have got it all mapped out. We're going to put you in a position on the street in front of a bank. There's a drop box there and we need you to uh, put an out-of-order sign okay. on the box. Okay. Basically, people are going to try and deposit money in that drop box, and you've got to convince them to give it to you instead. Okay? okay, okay. With us? So Rick's got to attempt one of the oldest scams in the book, the drop box. Posing as a security guard, the hustler positions himself outside a closed bank. By claiming that the bank's drop box is out of order, he must then convince anyone who arrives hoping to make a deposit to leave their cash with him instead. Take as much money as you can. But at the same time, if you feel there's any kind of problems, let us know. We will be listening. Rick will put the cash in his secure money box 
and hand the mark an official looking receipt as a convincer. Your ID. Is that okay? No, that's that's okay. That's healthy. Okay. That's very good. Your ID. Beautiful. Mm. There you go. It's time for Rick and Alex to hit the high street and get this scam underway. The hustlers have selected the bank opposite as Rick's target. It's ideally situated near scores of upmarket shops and cafes that deposit their day's takings after banking hours. To make his arrival look convincing, Alex is going to drop Rick outside the bank in the Securicon van. This short trip around the block is Rick's only chance to prepare himself to face the public in his new role. Once the scam's underway, Alex will wait in the van nearby, ready to help Rick make his getaway if he gets into trouble. Paul will keep Rick under constant surveillance from a vantage point across the street and is in radio contact in case of emergency. All right, off All you right. go. Let's do it. All right. Wish me luck. Let's in a bit. Here goes. From here on in, Rick's on his own. All right, he's in position. Copy that. First, Rick needs to put the bank's perfectly good drop box out of order. Then, position himself with his money box safely between his feet, just as a genuine security guard would. This scam is all about social compliance, and it's now Rick's job to play his part with such authority that people have no reason to doubt him and simply do what he says. He doesn't have too long to wait before someone turns up to deposit some cash. The con is on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can get you to fill out this form and then we'll just put it in. What's the business? While Rick takes this guy's details, another potential mark eyes up the drop box. Um. The first guy seems to be getting cold feet. Can Rick talk him round? Okay. Disaster. He leaves with his cash. Yeah. Yeah, it's out of order, sorry, you're gonna have to give it to me. Having just lost one mark, Rick can't afford to let the second one go. If you want it to be secure for this evening. Yeah. yeah. Can I put this in safely? Yes, you Thank can. You. Like buses, Rick's marks are all turning up at once. But if that third customer looks and sounds familiar, that's because it's Jess who's stepped in to help. That's how much is it, please? £200. Seeing someone else prepare to entrust their cash to the security guard should persuade this mark to follow suit. So I will be with you in a minute. So I love that one. Simon Prince, and I'll give you the receipt. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. It's worked. Rick and Jess's act has assured the mark enough to hand over his cash. That's an easy 200 quid to Rick. Yeah, of course you can. Thank you. With other marks possibly with an earshot, Rick takes Jess's money so his cover isn't blown. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice day. Rick's doing okay, but 200 quid isn't enough for the hustlers. They let him try his luck for a while longer. And pretty soon, someone else arrives to make a deposit. Do you know where the night box is? It's right here, unfortunately, it's out of order. This is a golden opportunity. Rick needs to go in for the kill, but has he learned his lesson by allowing the first mark to walk away? So if you have any money you need to be secure for the evening, then I can take it and give you a receipt. Otherwise, uh, you'd be best to hang on to it. It seems not. Rick gives this mark an option to hold on to her money. By letting his good nature get the better of him, he could have just let another mark slip through his fingers. Um, so what's the... No, of course, of course. I would make sure if I were you. How much would you like to deposit? Fortunately, she places her trust in Rick and goes ahead with the transaction. And Rick reluctantly relieves her of 200 quid, doubling his hole at a stroke. I'll just give you a receipt. He just needs to hand her a bogus receipt and he's home and dry. A good evening. What a gent. Seeing that Rick is struggling with his conscience, Alex decides it's time to move in. Alex to Rick, I'm coming to pick you up. Put the lock on the box, I'll be there in a couple of minutes. 
As instructed, Rick padlocks the money box containing his booty. Rick, don't forget the sign. And in less than a minute, he's out of there. You're right. Yeah. You had a bit of an adventure. Just the the straight line. I found really hard. I felt awful <laughs> as I was doing it. That was clearly a testing experience for Rick. <sighs> Quite shook up actually. Um, I uh, I found it really difficult, and I was really nervous all the way through. I ended up giving people an option when I shouldn't have done, really. At first I thought about it and I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really skeptical of this guy because I saw the helmet and I saw the coat. If someone comes and sees what they think to be an official, of course they're going to just give their money to them just like that. It's incredible that with just a costume and a, a little sign laminated stuck on a, on a box, you can take that money off people. This guy is busy doing his usual rounds as the neighborhood window cleaner. Along with his boss, he'll climb his ladders, risking life and limb to keep people's houses looking spick and span. Good morning. Come through the windows, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for a crack on, yeah. All right, mate. But they'll discover that while they were going up ladders, their profits were going down. This is the window cleaner scam. There appears to be some confusion, so the bemused window cleaner goes to square up with another customer. Uh, I've already given uh, your mate uh, 15 quid for the windows. Funny enough, that's what they said down there, we haven't spoon my first. A guy in a hat with a beard, quite long, dark hair. Hi mate, no, it only works for us in the way. It's not with you? No. So, right, okay. <laughs> I think we can stand on it. It sounds, sounds like it. Yeah. Alright mate, I'll go to the boss and say, oh, right, thanks mate. Right. So whilst this guy's been hard at work cleaning windows, someone else has been cleaning up the cash. Who is this mystery man? This scam is the realm of the opportunist. In his van, Alex scouts the streets looking for a window cleaner. As soon as he spots one, he parks up nearby and gets into character. With a money belt, chamois leather and woolly hat, he looks just the part. It's a brazen stunt to pull. He approaches a house within sight of the window cleaners and then gets to work. He's dangerously close to the real window cleaners, but he needs them in view because unbeknown to them, they're his convincer. Hi there. Hi. I'm here with the window cleaners. Do you need your windows done? Yeah. Looks like you do. <laughs> it's 10 usually, yeah. For uh, just the front, yeah? Cheers. Uh, we've got two houses, three houses to do down there, so we're going to be in another 20 minutes. But you don't need to be in, you just do it. Yeah? All right? No worries. Easy money. I'm with the window cleaners down there. Do you need your windows done? Alex has as long as it takes for the real window cleaners to finish their house. A whole front, I'll do it for you for a tenner. Taking pride in their work, they give Alex more than enough time for him to turn his trick all the way down the street. I'm with the window cleaners. Do you need your windows done? There you go. Yeah. Cheers, man. As they finish up, it's time for Alex to get out of there. But just a few streets down, there are more unsuspecting window cleaners about to find out that a mystery man has collected their hard-earned takings. And the man with a hat and a beard will remain a mystery. We thought, well, I think it's our mates mucking about or something, so we went up there, 
Just knocking the money and he said, oh, we've already paid someone in a bid. Whoever it was, is quick on their toes, put that way. He pointed to them. He was like, oh, I'm with those guys over there, so it's not that suspicious. Well, it's, it, it's a very good scam, yeah, certainly. If he does another 10 houses, that's 150 pounds, so that's not bad for days work for him. Yeah, we haven't got time to really look around because we're looking at the windows all the time, so if people are in and out and below us, we can't see them, do you know what I mean? Like, shocking, yeah, I <laughs> don't know how they've done it. <laughs> Of course, it seems like there are two people who fall victim to this scam. First of all, there's the house owner who pays for something without actually paying the person who's going to do the job. And then there's a window cleaner himself who doesn't get paid for the job that he does. But in actual fact, the truth is, is the person at home is the one who still owes money to the window cleaner. But the real genius here is how a simple disguise, a costume, can make people assume everything and stop asking the questions that they should be asking when handing over money at their doorstep. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. I've got a party yeah, all right. <laughs> the prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. <laughs> so watch and learn. Paul's out in a Brighton bar and fancies some free drinks. Anybody a physicist here? No. No? It's probably a good thing. <laughs> All right, here's the idea. I'll give me a napkin each. Take that one. Take that one. One for you. Okay. Unfold your napkin. And what we're going to do is we're going to make two tears. So you just tear it a little bit at a time so it doesn't go off the side. And then you stop about there, okay? I'll do it the same over here. Like this. Don't go all the way. There you go, that's it. So you end up with, uh, with, with a tear like that, okay? So do that. Okay, and stop towards the end, good. Right, okay, now here's the challenge. It's a very, very simple thing. All you have to do is hold on to these bits. So the other bit is hanging down. It's our t-shirt. Very good. Now, and what you have to do is pull them apart and make the middle piece fall to the floor or onto the table. And the first one to do it wins drinks from everybody else. So holding the napkin at each end, the bet is to pull away the two outer parts, leaving the middle part to fall down. So um, who wants to go first? Well, yeah, so you gotta, so just pull. Oh, you lose, go for it. You lose, go for it. You lose and... Uh, And I win. That's a round of drinks for Paul. He got the marks to tear their napkins in such a way that the bet looked easy. But as they've just found out, it's actually completely impossible to rip off both side sections simultaneously without holding the one in the middle. Well, let's see, a whiskey, a beer. Smart Make it a double whiskey. <laughs> yeah. We're smart, really. Yeah. Okay. So now we've come to the end of the real hustle undercover. It's time for an encore. If you've learned one lesson from this series, it's that hustlers can come in many guises, making it even harder for you to know when you're being conned. The guy Rob, he's, he's, he seemed like a genuine guy. To show how unwary members of the public can be separated from their cash, Alex, Jess and Paul have played a variety of roles. It's a delivery driver, mate. Are you interested in any DVDs? We do have a free check-in service today. And drawn on some classic characters. Thanks, mate. Take care. Bye. Look after your chakras. Some of them in particular you should always keep an eye out for. Starting with... Really? Number one. The damsel in distress. Who wouldn't want to help a girl with a broken leg? While she helped Jess, Alex helped himself to her bags. We ordered from here to there. Turn back around in my suitcase, some brown handbags were missing. And what about a pregnant lady? Oh, excuse me, can you help me please? This helpful mark was distracted long enough for Paul to steal her bag. 
which was the key to an ultimately shocking chain of events. I don't even think that when the kids come back home from school, I can let them see that. Then there was a young mum stranded in suburbia. I don't suppose you have a phone I could send a quick message from, do you? Jess sent a quick text to his wife. This is prize and joy. And she gave Alex and Paul the keys to his beloved sports car. He sent me a text earlier on saying, hand the keys to the mechanics for the Mazda. He did send me a text. Number two, the authority figure. Armed with the look, a speed gun and a steely attitude. Would you like it if they came to the park, got knocked down by a car? The hustlers convinced these motorists they'd broken the law. The £60 fine. And they all paid up on the spot. You don't want to argue, you just want to pay and cooperate. When the inland revenue came to call... The inland revenue. We're doing spot checks on the tills. Who was this shopkeeper to argue? Just run the UV pen and get everything in there. Okay, I won't be long. Yep. He stood by and watched as the contents of his till walked out the door. Is there a problem, gentlemen? And this Bobby on the beat didn't just take control of a tricky situation. That's all right, we'll sort this he out. Gave it to him. He also took both these guys' wallets. I had uh, credit cards and stuff in my wallet and about £100 in cash. Number three, the hero. It seemed security men Alex and Paul were saving these shoppers just in time. Please don't use the machine. The police have told us not to let anybody use these machines. Someone's been filling with these oh, machines. Oh yeah, no, no, no watch out, it's going to take your card. There are people up there recording your pin numbers, so... Can you get his card out, mate? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. But while Alex retrieved their cards, he also helped himself to a handful of their cash. I believe them because they've got like a walkie-talkie, big yellow luminous things on. We take your luggage from here, we check it in for you, and you get a first-class lounge uh, day pass. This knight in shining armour promised these travellers a stress-free check-in. You don't have to take that, I'm taking that for you. Yes, that's the whole service. It was anything but. I think we've just lost our bags. Do you think, yes, that sounds like a good idea, but looking back at it, I think, why was I such an idiot? I think I just found your dog. It's like white with uh, tan patches. Don't worry. <laughs> and pet rescuer Jess offered to return this woman's missing dog. Right, well, you're going to sort this out. Which had a very expensive accident on the way. It's 20 for the ride and 30 to get the seats dry clean. It's all right, darling. I'm Thank you very much. It might be a scam crystal because she hasn't turned up with Boo Boo. As well as those recognisable characters, we threw some even more familiar faces from our TV screens in at the deep end. You're going to steal somebody's bag from a cafe. Cheating in a poker game. Oh, me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I pass counterfeit notes around. Robbing a house. Doing a runner at a restaurant. <laughs> um, oh, no! Usually unflappable in front of the camera, these normally consummate professionals were out of their comfort zones when showing a different face to their public in the celebrity hustles. Could we just pop in and have a quick look? Is that all right? Saddled with the dubious challenge of committing a crime, these celebrities put their darker sides to the test. Some succeeded. I'm really grateful and I'll get it back to you. Do you have like fives and tens? That's the dodgy knot. Whilst others failed. I can see my knot is over there. But they all learned valuable lessons. I'm definitely no con woman. Oh man, I couldn't be a professional blagger or burglar or anything. I think I've learned that I'm a lot more nervous about things, but then that's quite a big thing to be nervous about, ripping someone off. So remember, hustlers are chameleons, willing to assume any identity in order to get what they want. Appearances can be deceiving, so think twice and keep your wits and cash about you. Oh. I could cry. I could actually cry right now, I mean, I could cry.